All right. Um, <coughs> Patrick, if it's okay with you, I would really like to move the um, election of officers up so that we actually have a secretary. Because <laughs> our last, our secretary's term was up at the end of last year. Would that be okay? Yes, that All right. Um, do I have any nominations for chair? I nominate our current chair to be the chair again. I support that. Okay. I'll, I'll take that. Is all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. No enemies tonight. Good. Okay. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and do we have a nomination for vice chair? I nominate our current vice chair to Second. stay in the place. He Would did a great job last meeting. I'll accept that. Okay. I support that. All right, excellent. So we, I'm sorry, I didn't say who moved and supported the first motion. That was Commissioner Weber and Commissioner Foster. And the second motion that we just made was Commissioner Eggenberger and Commissioner Janowski. Yes, sorry, you, you thirded. Okay. So all in okay. favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, you don't have any enemies yet either. No. Awesome. All right. And then finally, uh, could we hear a nomination for secretary? Nominate Commissioner Eggman. Support. I think that means I do have enemies. We love you, No, come on. Will you accept? Yeah. Okay, awesome. Um, so we have a motion by Commissioner Weber and support by Commissioner Foster, right? To, uh, to have Commissioner Eggenberger act as secretary for this year. So all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, I feel better now. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. And uh, Commissioner Eigenberger, as official secretary, could you please call the roll? I would be happy to. Uh, Commissioner Cruz, we know he's not here. Turn this on. Yeah, he gave prior notice. <clears throat> uh, Commissioner Eigenberger, here. Commissioner Foster, here. Commissioner Janowski, here. Commissioner Lee, here. Commissioner Singh, here. Commissioner Watkins, here. Commissioner Weber, here. And Chairperson. Uh, Zuber. Here. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And let the record reflect that we have Patrick Sloan, our community planner, and Aaron Schluto, our, uh, I can never remember what your role is, what your official job title, assistant? Senior planner. Senior planner. Yes. And then Zach. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And we also Thank have uh, Ann Cerniak from Foster Swift um, attending virtually. Oh, awesome. Thank you. All right. Very good. Um, we have minutes from January 8th. Would anyone like to, mo to make a motion about those? Okay. Uh, for Support. anyone who didn't hear that, Commissioner Weber made the motion. Commissioner Eggenberger su is supporting. Any further discussion? All right, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Excellent. Um, and we have an agenda this evening, which I already had amended. <laughs> Anybody want to add anything? Do we need to add anything to the agenda, Patrick? Uh, no, I think everything is all set. Okay. Anybody else have anything to add or change? All right. Anybody want to make a motion about the agenda? This is fun, isn't I it? I move we accept the agenda as amended. All right. Thank you. Support. All right, we have a motion by Commissioner Eggenberger and support by Commissioner Singh. Any further discussion? All right, uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Awesome. All right, communications. Um, Patrick, I know you forwarded a couple of things to us. Is there anything that came in late? Uh, nothing that came in late. We had one public comment for the springs at Willow Creek, which we emailed over the weekend. Mm -hmm. We also sent that to the applicant. There was also a public comment from a neighbor of Faith Baptist Church that we emailed this afternoon. We received the comment this afternoon, so we emailed it to the planning commissioners. Uh, we emailed it to the applicant as well. So we can talk about both letters during uh, their respective times on the agenda. Okay, excellent, thank you. <clears throat> All right, so our first, uh, Item tonight on the uh, real item on the agenda, I guess, is our uh, a public hearing. We are going to be discussing the springs at Willow Creek. This is um, item number 049 PDDA 8065 and 049 SPD 8063. 
The Springs at Willow Creek, we are considering a PDD amendment and site plan for parcel numbers, uh, several parcel numbers. I'm not going to read them all off. The property is located on the east side of Lots Road between Ford and Cherry Hill. The proposed use is new construction of 280 rental units, attached apartments, and a clubhouse. Patrick, please tell us all about it. Uh, sure, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, proposed um, amendment is the proposed third amendment to uh, what was originally called Wellington on the Willow. And um, for those of you who've been <coughs> on the Planning Commission for a few years, you may recall Wellington on the Willow or um, the successor project called Tremont Place. And uh, this project goes back several years. And originally the site was uh, conditionally rezoned back in November 2016. And the conditional rezoning was from light industrial to R6, single family attached residential. Um, and that also removed this land from the corporate park overlay district. And I'll put a map of it here on the screen just so that we can uh, take a look at it. Uh, specifically, this project is on the east side of Lots Road and south of Ford Road. And uh, so we're looking at the property here just south of Willow Creek. And um, the property extends southward um, down to uh, just south of this woodland area here. And I'll bring up the packet here on the uh, screen here and then I'll go to the project outline of the site as well. Uh, there we go. Yeah, so here's a project outline, east side of Lots Road, uh, just south of the Home Depot. And um, so after the um, project was conditionally rezoned to R6, the statement of conditions uh, had a number of provisions. One of them was a conceptual plan for a maximum of 282 attached residential units on the site. And um, since the conditional rezoning, there was uh, a project approved called Wellington on the Willow. And there was a project um, that was amended uh, from Wellington on the Willow called Tremont Place. And um, so the, uh, the amendments that took place after the original PDD, some of them shifted number of units, uh, some going as high as 282, some going as low as 268. Uh, some of the versions had an owner-occupied model. Some of them had a renter-occupied model. Um, and so the project is, has, um, at this point, it's proposed for its third amendment. And one of the major differences with the proposed third amendment is there's a new developer. So uh, the previous developer that had started with a conditional rezoning and the original PDD um, is no longer part of the project and um, there's a new developer that stepped in to uh, take uh, the project forward. Um, the PDD itself um, expires uh, six years after the date of the approval of the second amendment, which was the last amendment. That took place in 2021. So it's currently under its second amendment of the PDD and that expires on January 26 of 2027. So there's about three more years left in this PD. Um, so with a new developer, uh, they're proposing a similar concept that has been proposed before. The previous developer had a few different versions of architecture that they went through the process with. Um, this architecture that's proposed by Continent, Continental, the new developer, is uh, somewhat different, but um, it doesn't have the 50% brick, but none of the uh, developments preceding it ever had the 50% brick. So we'll talk a little bit more about the architectural style later in the review. Uh, what's proposed in this third amendment are uh, rental units, which um, throughout most of the project, it's been proposed as rental. There are uh, 280 units proposed. The original, P the original conditional rezoning allowed for 282. Um, the density has been as low as 268 with the uh, Second Amendment, so um, it's within the approved range that has been approved previously. Um, <clears throat> one of the main purposes uh, the, of the Third Amendment to the PDD, and one of the main differences between the Third Amendment and the Second Amendment before, is that there's a requirement of Wayne County to locate stormwater ponds outside of floodway areas. So the floodway area on the north side of the site along Willow Creek uh, there have, there, the development has been moved away from 
that area, as well as the stormwater ponds being moved southward. And when we put up some of the plans on the screen later, we'll show you some of those areas. Um, the plans previously included some of the stormwater detention ponds on the north side of the site that are within the floodway areas of Willow Creek. Um, as a result, those uh, ponds have been moved southward and are outside of the floodway area. So the floodway area is maintained as uh, floodway and then the ponds for the stormwater for the development itself are outside of that floodway area. Um, there are also um, uh, seven, overall there are seven major changes with this development and the previous PDDs. Uh, the first is changing the project owner as we previously noted. The second is reconfiguring the development area due to the relocation of the ponds and changes to the schedule modifications as a result. So what that generally means is that with um, the same number of units but clustered farther south, the schedule modifications means that the buildings will get a little bit tighter to each other. Uh, that will result in more open space, more green space, but lower setbacks as a result. The third major change is increasing the number of units from 268 at the Second Amendment to 280, which is proposed in the Third Amendment. And again, there was a maximum of 282 units allowed in the conditional rezoning agreement. The fourth change is changing the proposed ownership from a condominium development to a rental development. The fifth change is changing the architecture of the residential buildings. The uh, sixth is reducing the number of phases from four to one. So the proposed development will all take place within one phase. And the seventh major change is making the related changes to the proposed PD agreement. Um, the Township Legal Council has reviewed the proposed PDD agreement um, and is in, in agreement with uh, most of the provisions. There are some minor things to go through, but uh, the major portions of it were in agreement with. Um, overall, the proposed development uh, consists of 14 townhomes, and I'll bring up the plans themselves so that we can all see them. proper scale here. Okay, so uh, overall here in the, in the black and white, and I think we may have a color version too that's a little bit more illustrative, but um, we'll go with this one for now. So Lots Road on the left side of the graphic goes north to south, and um, here's the site, approximately 40 acres. And um, it shows the, there are 14 buildings, uh, townhome buildings on the site, two, uh, 20 units each, so 280 units total. The units are two stories. Um, there's also a one-story clubhouse uh, located near the front of the entrance off of Lots Road. There are six detached garage buildings. Uh, three of the buildings have 12 spaces. Three of the buildings have eight spaces. Uh, there's a mail building that's um, east of the clubhouse. There's a maintenance building located in the central portion of the development. The development also includes two pet parks, a pool, and a playground. Um, each unit will have a dedicated entrance from the exterior, so there's no common hallways within. They all have their dedicated um, entrances and exits. The site has uh, two access points on the Lots Road. The primary access point is on the north side. Um, there's a gated entry to the north. And on the south side, it's emergency vehicle access only, which is also gated. Um, one of the um, unique uh, design features of this site is that it's surrounded by a fence. Uh, the entire development is surrounded by fencing. And uh, most of the fencing is decorative. There is some of the fencing that um, is uh, chain link. The fencing along the Lots Road frontage along the west side is decorative. Most of the chain link most of the fencing though, uh, based on the linear footage, is chain link. And uh, in our review letter, we've recommended that um, that fencing be uh, more decorative because it is visible from different uh, lines of sight. Um, some of those lines of sight are from Lots Road, some of the lines of sight are from the residential development to the east in the city of Westland. <clears throat> um, in concluding our staff report, um, 
we conclude that if the plans and the architectural elevations are satisfactory to the Planning Commission, our recommendation would be approval of amendment number three uh, to the Springs at Willow Creek PDD. Um, and also, um, if the architectural elevations are acceptable, then we also recommend approval of the site plan um, for the Springs at Willow Creek. Now, if the PDD amendment and the site plan are recommended <coughs> for approval by the Planning Commission, they still must go to the Township Board of Trustees for final action. Um, if the plans and the architectural elevations are satisfactory, our recommendation does include a list of 11 conditions. <clears throat> uh, the first is revising the PDD agreement to the satisfaction of Township Legal Counsel and the Planning Division staff, including listing all modifications in Exhibit C. The second is adding a modification to the ordinance to reduce the internal drive width to 22 feet instead of 24 feet. Um, we think that this may be allowed by the ordinance itself. There are some areas where the ordinance is unclear, but a 22 foot wide width is appropriate given that in a typical parking lot, 22 feet wide is, uh, 22 feet wide is the drive aisle width minimum that's required. So if it can fit two cars going in opposite directions, it'll function well for an internal uh, street for a multifamily development. Our third recommended condition is adding a modification from section 5.03C of the ordinance for unit landscaping. And that's basically to calculate the unit landscaping based on the upper units only. And in our staff report, we describe why and how it's been applied in similar multifamily developments in the past. Our fourth recommended condition is adding a modification um, <coughs> from the code of ordinances to allow uh, five foot high fencing in the front yard area, uh, provided that the fence along Lots Road include masonry piers every 40 feet. Uh, one of our concerns there is not necessarily um, the fence itself, um, the decorative nature of it helps, but without something to break up the fence, there's just a long expanse of, um, of, of just a single material type of fence. And in other multifamily developments or even non-multifamily residential developments in Canton where there's a fence, a perimeter fence or a boundary fence or even a decorative fence element in the front, a lot of those have a masonry pier or something along the fence to break it up and add an architectural and aesthetic element to it. So we recommend that if the fence is allowed in the front yard area, which um, does require a modification from the code of ordinances that um, there be masonry piers every 40 feet to break that up. Our fifth recommended condition is adding parking lot landscaping to the plans in accordance with the zoning ordinance. Our sixth recommended condition is adding stone wainscoting around the sides of the garage buildings and the maintenance building. Um, the fronts of those buildings have it. Um, some of the sides have it, but we also want it um, on the rear as well, just so it's a consistent architectural pattern around those buildings. Our seventh recommended condition is extending the depth of parking spaces in front of the garages to 22 feet in accordance with the zoning ordinance. Um, that's a depth required by the zoning ordinance to allow enough spacing between um, a garage and the sidewalk behind. So typically if someone parks in their driveway, they're not gonna pull the car right up to the garage door like they would in a parking lot, pulling right up to a line or the car in front. People, when they park, they usually give a little bit of space between their car and the garage. And then we don't want the cars to overhang the sidewalk. So that's why that 22 feet is required. Our eighth recommended condition is revising the dumpster enclosure to comply with the zoning ordinance. Uh, the ninth is adding the light specifications above the building doors to the plans. Um, these are typically decorative types of elements. They're not always turned on. So we would just wanna see the cut sheet and specification for those. The 10th recommended condition is revising the fence to be decorative rather than chain link around the entire perimeter of the property, except around the internal pet parks, which we would recommend being chain link. And the 11th recommended condition is revising the ground sign area not to exceed 24 square feet pursuant to the ordinance. We also have a recommended 12th condition to require all sidewalks to be five feet in width. Um, we discussed this with the applicants last week about the five foot wide sidewalks. And um, there may be some other areas of the site where they recommend converting the three and a half foot wide sidewalks to five feet. But there are some other areas where they'll request maintaining a three and a half foot wide sidewalk width, which we can talk about a little bit later. 
So um, I'll end it right there with uh, our staff recommendation. Uh, we have the architectural plans. We have, I think, a color uh, site plan that we can show as well. Uh, but at this point, we'll wrap it up um, and take any questions that you have. Thank you, Patrick. And just for the record, the um, color site plan is page 68 in your packet. So if Thank you, you wanted to pull that up, it gets a nice drawing. Uh, is the project sponsor here? Okay. Um, do you have anything to add to what Patrick just said? Okay. And while you're going to the podium, do I have a motion to open a public hearing? So moved. All right. Support. All right. I have a motion by Commissioner Weber and support by Commissioner Eggenberger to open the public hearing. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Thank you. Could you please tell us who you are? And Yeah. Uh, my name is Jordan Tyken. I'm with Continental Properties. I'm joined this evening by my colleague Bridget Wiesler and our civil engineer, uh, Jared Kime with Atwell. Uh, thanks for the intro, Patrick. Um, we're excited to be here this evening to give you guys the details of our proposed development, but to start, I just want to take a step back and give a quick intro of who we are at Continental Properties. Uh, do you mind jumping to the next slide, Patrick? So Continental uh, was founded in 1979. Uh, historically, has developed uh, retail, hospitality, and multifamily projects. Um, for about the last 20 years, Continental has, has focused primarily on developing multifamily communities. So to date, Continental's <coughs> developed uh, over 100 communities in 19 different states um, and does have a presence on the, on the western side of Michigan. Next slide, please, Patrick. Um, so to start, uh, as Patrick mentioned, our site is located on the east side of uh, Lots Road, just south of Four Road uh, and east of 275. Next slide. And before I jump into the site plan, I think an uh, important piece of context here, um, Continental's proposed development would be the first uh, within the Lots Road Sanitary Sewer District. So as part of our proposed development, uh, we would be um, entering in a uh, reimbursement agreement with the township, but would be constructing uh, a pump station as well as a sanitary main that would, you know, be able to provide <clears throat> sanitary sewer capacity to the entire uh, district here outlined um, on this slide. Next, please. So as you can see, this here is our site plan. Uh, as Patrick mentioned, it consists of 14 residential buildings, all with 20 units, as well as a clubhouse. The clubhouse is located conveniently at the northwest corner of the site. Um, in addition to that, there's a combination of surface parking as well as detached garages, as well as um, attached garages uh, within each of the buildings. Other amenities include uh, a uh, clubhouse uh, with a resort style pool, a playground uh, there you can see at number six. Uh, we've introduced a nature trail through the conservation easement uh, on the lower half of the site. Um, and uh, additionally, two uh, pet playgrounds located uh, at number 12 there, as well as um, number eight. Next slide, please. So you can see here, this is a um, uh, representative of our, uh, of the style of building that we would be constructing here. One thing I will note is the siding materials here are not representative of what we're ultimately proposing in Canton, um, what we are proposing um, has a little bit more masonry um, and di a different color scheme. Next slide, please. So these are, uh, we have two different uh, elevations, color schemes for our architecture. Um, specifically with these buildings, we're going for a historic farmhouse vernacular. So generally simple, using stone rather than brick um, to mimic uh, field stone in, in farmhouse architecture. Um, using all fiber cement uh, where, where masonry is not being placed, so no vinyl siding, all of the trim around the, around the doors and windows is fiber cement as well. So there'll be a, there would be a combination of uh, fiber cement, board and batten, lap siding, and flat panel, and then in addition to that, the stone masonry. Next, please. Uh, so here, same, same concept, but you can see we've introduced an additional color. These would be uh, you know, placed um, 
every other throughout the development, you know, so as to limit um, and create more visual interest and, and reduce any um, monotony with the color scheme throughout the development. Next, please. This is a elevation of our clubhouse. You can see on the tower of the clubhouse, there would be springs signage. Next, please. This is a uh, representative uh, rendering of what you would see pulling in, uh, coming southbound um, into the property off of Lots Road. Greeted there by the clubhouse, and then you can see here there'd be an um, access gate that would let you into the development. Next, please. So again, um, our site plan, uh, as Patrick mentioned, uh, we are proposing this be a gated community. Um, that is, pro that is, that is uh, typical with, with our developments. We have a rather large um, uh, collection of data from other communities we've developed, and we find that tenants typically, uh, for a sense of security, like to have a, a, a gate around uh, the development. Next, please. Um, and then to take a step back from exactly what we're proposing, two other additional details that Patrick had touched on briefly. Um, as part of this development, uh, we will be required to impact uh, some wetlands. I should note that there, there is a uh, wetland permit in place to impact 2.4 acres of wetland, and it's a little difficult to see uh, on this screen here, but the areas that are cross-hatched um, all currently um, fall underneath the existing in-place permit to be impacted. The areas that are green on this are the wetland areas that we are proposing to be impacted. So that's to say we are proposing no wetland impacts in addition of what's already allowed underneath the existing permit. Uh, and in fact, we're actually proposing a reduction in overall wetland impacts from the previous proposed development. Next, please. And then lastly, I just want to quickly touch on uh, the floodplain, as Patrick mentioned. So as part of this development, we'll be working um, with the county, the state, and FEMA uh, to adjust the limits of the floodplain for our development. Um, you can see here, uh, this is from our engineer, uh, and none of our development really will be within that floodplain area, um, which I think is, is noteworthy here. Next, please. Um, so with that, uh, as Patrick had outlined, there were some staff recommendations that uh, we'll discuss with all of you here. Um, in particular, there are a few items that uh, we wanted to address, um, and I've bolded those. So item 4A, staff has recommended um, a modification allowing for a five-foot fence, and then in addition to that, the masonry piers. Um, so at this point, we are... Um, willing to go down to a four foot fence around the perimeter so as to avoid the modification request. Um, one thing regarding the masonry piers, um, those would be within the easement needed for the sanitary sewer main that we'll be installing. Um, so we'd like to have a discussion about those. Uh, particularly, we feel that the landscaping that we're proposing along Lots Road there, uh, the landscaping with the understory of shrubs, the canopy trees, uh, as well as the ornamental fence, uh, we feel like there would be, you know, architectural variation along the frontage there and wouldn't necessarily be monotonous. You know, we could achieve uh, variation through different plant material rather than um, masonry piers within that easement area. Next slide, please. Um, and then we, we've highlighted uh, number seven here. Um, there is a recommendation from staff to provide uh, 22 feet from the garage door uh, to the back of the sidewalk uh, in front of all of our um, garage doors of our residential buildings. And we can jump back to the site plan here in a minute and take a closer look at those specific areas. Um, you know, speaking with Jared, our civil engineer here, we can accommodate that in most areas, but in some particular instances, it will be challenging to accommodate the 22 feet. So we'd ask for a reduction in that overall dimension, something closer to uh, the typical parking stall dimension, which is 20 foot depth, uh, rather than the 22 foot recommendation here. Um, other points, revising the fence to be decorative rather than chain link, except around the internal pet parks. Um, so we have the ornamental fence or decorative fence along Lots Road. 
we feel that where we're showing the, the vinyl coated chain link, it would be a black uh, vinyl coated chain link fence, um, that those are in less visible areas um, and you know, are, not, are not visible to the public. Um, and our residents, you know, from our, the customer experience data that, we, that we've gathered, um, typically don't you know, raise concern with the fence type around the community. Point 11 here, uh, revising the ground sign area not to exceed 24 square feet. So the current sign that we're proposing is 32 uh, square feet. That's the monument sign at the entrance. Um, so it would be an additional eight feet um, above what uh, code allows here. Uh, and then lastly, the uh, parking, uh, the, the, excuse me, the sidewalk width, um, we'd like to discuss um, keeping the sidewalk widths as is, um, instead of adding an additional one and a half feet to all sidewalks. We're currently showing a wider sidewalk, seven foot depth at the back of curb, anywhere where sidewalk is adjacent to the surface parking so someone can pull in. Um, and if car overhang won't impede anyone from walking on those sidewalks. Um, but we feel that, you know, for us, three and a half feet throughout our communities is pretty standard. Um, and don't necessarily get complaints from any residents regarding sidewalk width. Um, so we feel like overall, uh, you know, we'd just be adding impervious surface um, to the site um, when it may not be needed. So those are all the talking points we want to discuss with you here this evening and hear anything else that, that uh, you as commissioners may want to discuss here. Next slide, please, Patrick. So again, just to provide an overview of, of the requests we're making here tonight, um, A would be for uh, approval or recommendation of approval for the PDD amendment, and then B would be uh, the site plan review. Uh, and with that, I will uh, open it up to questions uh, that anyone may have. Can you go back two slides real quick? Um, I have a question about your, um, you glossed over 11. Um, you wanted you so the the bolded items are items you you are you have a problem with that correct. you don't yeah, want to comply yeah correct with. so the the non bolded items we are fine accommodating in our plans the bolded items are items we'd like to discuss with you here okay this evening. and what was your justification for item eleven not not asking for thirty two instead of twenty four square feet we just feel like it'll be better visibility. Um, you know our the, the sign that we typically install is thirty two square feet. Um, so we feel like, you know, with traffic moving by along lot, excuse me, along lots road, uh, the extra 32 feet just allows for a little larger typeface. Okay. Um, Thank you. Okay. Very great. good. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, anybody from the audience, would you like to address this? Mr. McCoslin, come on up. Good evening, Commission. How are you? Patrick, can you go back to the plat map that you started off with? Just for the record, could you tell us who you oh, are? We all sorry. know who you are, but I don't know. Damacause on 2011 North Lots Road. Thank you. Um, the one with the yellow boundaries, Pat. Right there. Okay. So if you look at the site, um, as I spoke to you last month on a development that we proposed just a thousand feet to the north. Um, here's where we have the disparity. As I spoke to you and told you that this parcel was exempted from the corporate overlay and it was also had a major zoning change. And then it went under a PDD. Now that PDD has been assigned. But the only difference here now, so if you look, if you look at that line and go straight across the street, that's our land. So now you have this site, which is an out of the corporate overlay, across the street, is in the corporate overlay. 1,000 feet up the street, which is the development we proposed, was turned down by this very panel. Excuse me, Mr. McCoslin. Do you have comments specific to this I do. project? It does. Because it goes we to can this. take your comments about the general process right. later. Okay. Okay, but just one process to this. Okay. This has now become a business site because it has switched to, from a condominium development, what it was before, to now a rental property. So under the state of Michigan guidelines, you have no opportunity for a homestead exemption, which makes it a business. So mm -hmm. my question is, 
if we're going to implement CBD with central business district overlay, why are we not applying it to here? Okay, thank That's you. That's the question. And I'm not saying I'm for CBD. I'm against CBD. Mm -hmm. Because CBD would impact them greatly, mm -hmm. as CBD would impact us greatly. But we're right across the street, so to me that's discriminatory. I think that the difference is that this had a PDD approved. Is that correct, Patrick? Yeah, there was a original PDD that went with this and it a conditional rezoning. But it opted out. That's the thing. It was allowed to opt out because I was at the meeting. I spoke at the meeting. The main reason was it had the opportunity for ownership. And ownership negated the overlay. I see what you're saying. Now it's a business. Mm -hmm. There's no chance to own these units. Right. So the, that's, a, that's, a, that's a very decisive thing that I want to make a point of. Second, we have to talk about the sewer. The sewer is right there at the north line of the yellow line. So if this development comes in and there's a pressurized sewer being proposed, we knew that before, talk has come up, how do we service the district? Is it something that we need to look at both sides of the street? Because six years ago, I don't know if you know or not, we attempted to tap the utilities at the yellow line when the road was tore up. So we got to the point of construction, the day of construction start, and we were shut down. Now here we are with no utilities again. And as I told you, the synergy in this area is picking up. So we have to be cognizant about the utilities. We have water there. Water's brand new. It has no customers on it, but it's ready to go. So we have water. We don't have sewer. Now, if you pump the sewer to the north, we got a pipe capacity because that pipe is owned by Home Depot. They gave it to the township as part of their moving forward plan. There's only so much capacity on that pipe. If we're pumping south, I don't know. But I know if we're pumping north, we have an issue. Uh, Again, great to see something come into the area. Not very happy about the architecture, but that's just me personally. I know we had a nice edgier project before. To me, this looks a little more bulky, clunky. Maybe we could pick up some, and I'm not here to criticize anybody's architecture. That's in the eye of the beholder, right? Somebody might think it's beautiful. I just, I never wanna, I never wanna limit nobody's rights. They can build what they wanna build. That's fine. My question is those two things, the overlays coming back to haunt us and the sewer. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? I move to close the public hearing. Support. All right, we have a motion by Commissioner Weber and support by, was that Commissioner Watkins? It was. All right, awesome. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, excellent. So, um, I'm gonna start with Commissioner Janowski. What, what, what are your thoughts? I guess the overall massing, there is a point there, the overall massing has changed. I do see this as prior being approved. We went through this before and very similar type projects, so I don't see an issue there. I do have an issue with the landscaping, decreasing the amount. I know the recommendation is to decrease it, but looking at the plan, it looks kind of sparse to me. Um, masonry, masonry piers, that is an issue too. I guess I'd have to see more detail to understand the the aesthetics and the garage, the same thing. Dimensionally, I can understand if the garage can't be, the drive can't be 22 feet in some things, that's just logical. And if it, that's the case, that's fine. But if they can be 22 feet, then I support that. That's my comments. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Foster. I um, had a similar question to Commissioner Janowski about the parking or a similar comment um, about the parking. Um, and also wondering, do we have any other gated communities in Canton? Um, I, I can't think of any gated communities off the top of my head. I know that some have fences, but to actually get through a gate to get in, there are none that are coming to mind. There may be some, I just can't think of any at the moment.
back. Uh, that one on Google Street View, they have a gatehouse, but there's no gate. I had that same question. Yeah, I'm just, and I know other communities have um, gated communities, just wondering if there are any public safety flags around it being gated. Um, I don't, our uh, fire department has looked at that. They haven't raised any issues. They would be able to get through. They would have a Knox box and otherwise have access to get through. Um, I haven't talked to the fire marshal directly about uh, this specific gate in terms of, you know, whether it's okay with fire code or if he would recommend not having it under these circumstances, but we can ask. Thank you. Anything else? Okay. Commissioner Weber. I guess first of all, for me, this is the second time through with this with this development, and overall it's the third time for this board. What's going on that this keeps changing? I mean, what, um, I mean, is something really gonna get built here? Well, um, I can talk a little bit about what we looked at last year uh, when it was the original developer, and this was before the Planning Commission, probably about this time last year, and it was the Third Amendment, and it was recommended for approval, and it was almost ready to go to the board for both the uh, PDD and the site plan. I think both were recommended by the Planning Commission, and uh, right before it was ready to go to the board, the uh, applicant decided not to pursue the project anymore. And um, I'm not sure all the reasons. There could have been one reason or multiple reasons. Um, and at that same time, um, we were negotiating with the applicants over the sewer agreement, the pump station, the sewer access. So that had also taken some time. So um, I'm not, I never got all the reasons why the original developer decided not to pursue it. Um, but we did, um, whenever uh, people would contact the township about available multifamily properties, this is one that we would highlight in terms of something that was available in terms of zoning and having a little bit of site work done with it too. So, um, but to answer your question, I didn't get the full story in terms of why it had, it had uh, been abandoned. So that makes, that raises another question for me and this is maybe to the applicant. The other developer walked away, Patrick doesn't know the reason why, but he said that one thing he indicated, they were in the process of negotiating the sewer agreement. Is there, is, are, are there any red flags like that with you folks? I mean. Yeah, so I can, I can speak to this. Um, regarding dropping this site as of right now, um, there are you know, no red flags. Uh, Continental is well capitalized and we are prepared to close on this site if we can get through uh, all of the entitlements and permitting here. Um, I know that Patrick had mentioned this before, um, but we are intending for this to be a single phase development. Um, and if all goes well, uh, we'd be breaking ground here uh, in August of this summer. Um, so we are determined to uh, you know, make this work. Um, you know, to speak to, I can't really necessarily speak to why other developers may have dropped it, uh, but this is a challenging site. Uh, you know, no sanitary, so there needs to be a pump station built, wetlands, floodplain. Um, you know, there's a number of site constraints that, uh, you know, we've been working through with our engineer, uh, and we're confident that, that we can get it done. So my next, my follow-up to that then is maybe both to you and to Patrick, um, kind of related to the question of why other developers have backed out and we can speculate as to why that may, may have been, but you're proposing all rental community. Correct. Um, there are a number of rental communities already in Canton. Um, and I know that the township is, desires to see housing that appeals to uh, young professionals in particular to get people to want to live here and stay here and all that sort of thing. Is there 
is I read your market analysis, and maybe this part goes to Patrick. Is there, do we feel that there is market for more rental housing of this nature in Canton? Um, we think there is based on the number of inquiries that we get from multifamily developers, many of them national developers where they've done some larger scale market studies and they're looking for places in uh, the Midwest or Southeast Michigan in particular. And uh, Canton does resonate with a lot of those national firms that do contact us. Yeah, and just to speak with, to what Patrick said, uh, you know, we have a market research team in house as well. Uh, and they, they'll locate, uh, you know, markets based on, you know, typical demographics and, you know, supply and demand factors that we look for. Um, there was a, you know, a, a lack of multifamily housing development between about 2006 and 2015. Uh, and we're finding that, uh, you know, supply uh, has not caught up, caught up uh, with current demand. Um, so we're confident that, you know, we'd be able to lease up this development. And then I wanted to touch on, uh, what you had mentioned about young professionals. So across all of our communities, about 46% of our uh, demographic is the 24 to 34 year age group. So um, we certainly target uh, the young professional demographic. With at, our the, at the product. price point you're projecting in your, in your analysis? Yeah, yep. Um, I guess the last thing, and Patrick, I guess this is back to you, that I would, since a lot of us out here weren't on this board when this project was first developed and, and dealt with, I guess maybe I'd like to know more about the history of what Mr. McCausland raises, kind of an illegal opinion about, about what he's raised with taking this out of the, C, the CPOD and uh, any kind of disparity between how this property is treated and how, how their property is treated from a zoning perspective? Um, well, I can speak to a couple of issues. One with, um, with, the, uh, with a master plan in terms of uh, north of Willow Creek. North of Willow Creek, the master plan recommends uh, C3 regional commercial and central business district overlay. Uh, south of Willow Creek, uh, it recommends uh, more mixed use uh, in a series of different districts. Um, I wasn't with the township when this was originally rezoned, so a lot of the circumstances under which that was negotiated, um, I wasn't here then. But I think that the R6 um, was intended to be consistent with the master plan. The other thing that I can speak to is that when the project was originally approved, the conditional rezoning just set a number of units. It didn't state whether they had to be owner-occupied or renter-occupied. And I think the original PD agreement and the first amendment were the renter-occupied. Uh, the Second Amendment shifted. The Second Amendment shifted to an owner-occupied model where um, it, it must have become ec more economical at that time to do more uh, owner-occupied, in which case it would have been a, a condominium development. And then the Third Amendment, which we're in now, which uh, was also proposed a year ago by the previous developer, um, that came with the rental uh, back to what it was originally approved as. And at that time, we did reach out to Township Legal Counsel to see if there was any issue of going between rental and ownership and vice versa. And when they looked at the original conditional rezoning agreement, it didn't specify the ownership model. So it could be owner-occupied or renter-occupied. It just set those numbers of units. Okay. Uh, I guess my other comments are related to what uh, Commissioner Janowski and uh, Commissioner Foster have brought up already, uh, so I, I won't repeat those questions, and I'll, I'll conclude my questions. Thank you, Commissioner Weber. Commissioner Eggenberger. Yes. Um, Patrick, were you going to uh, reference the email that we got about this? Uh, yes. Um, so we had an email that we received um, late last week. Um, from um, a neighboring resident that was concerned about um, some of the floodplain area and uh, any potential for flooding. And uh, so um, we looked at the, um, on the floodplain of the uh, site plan itself, and I'll bring, I'll bring up this in a little bit more detail so that we can, uh, we can review it specifically. Um, Yeah, I'll show that. So here's the proposed site plan um, and the development. And 
So if we see where the, the units are on the screen here, and then north of the units are the parking and the drive, and then after the units, that's when the landscaping starts. And just north of that, there's a bioretention area, kind of like a swale. And then north of that are, is the detention basin. Um, so up until that point, it's out of the floodway area. Uh, once we're north of that, then um, there's a series of floodplain and floodway area that um, is outside of the development itself. Um, and then the ponds are outside of the floodway area. So the project is engineered uh, to uh, drain to the detention basins and to meet the Wayne County standards. Um, so I can, uh, I can mention it as far as that, where it's designed in accordance with the county standards and um, Eagle State uh, Eagle Department will also be reviewing the plans because of some of the wetlands as well. Um, one other item that I did want to note is um, with some of the landscaping that's proposed um, between this site and the single family residential neighborhood to the west. And uh, specifically uh, um, talk about this uh, dividing line right here. Um, and if we go north of the landscaping, this, uh, this is a sidewalk stub and this is a road stub from the development in Westland to the east. When that development was originally built, it was thought that those stubs would remain there and then in the future, um, potentially a development would pick up that stub and run all the way to Lots Road. With the original PDD agreement, both the original developer and the uh, current developer are not proposing to extend that road. So that'll remain as a stub. And um, a lot of the topography that's here um, is proposed to remain or be graded according to the engineered plans uh, with the pond. So stepping back from this, um, there's a heavily landscaped berm between um, the single family residences on the east side of the line in the city of Westland and the site itself and the multifamily units. So there's a, a berm that's proposed along the eastern lot line. There's a row of double, or double row of evergreen trees as well as uh, mixed in deciduous and ornamental trees there. So along this lot line, there are dozens of trees that are staggered um, that will, um, uh, produce a, a vegetated boundary that'll hopefully be um, maybe not 100%, but um, uh, very close to buffer over the long term. Um, so, but regarding um, any kind of floodplain drainage and wetland impacts, I would defer to the uh, engineers on that question as well. Okay, thank you. Um, could you also just bring up then the um, bolded numbers that? Um, had problems with, I can't remember all of them. Oh, sure. Yeah, could you go back to the previous page? So I think there were some. So this was wanting to make it a four foot high fence, so then you wouldn't have to have the masonry, is that correct? Yes, I, I apologize. So when we had originally submitted this, we were proposing a five foot. And so what Patrick has included here was a uh, modification to accommodate a five foot. Whereas since staff has provided their recommendations, we are fine going to a four foot. So we do not need that modification for the five foot. Um, so what we ultimately uh, will be in our drawings will be a four foot fence around the perimeter. But no masonry. We, yes. You guys were okay with that, Patrick? Uh, well, the, the fence would still technically be in a front yard setback area. Um, so we think that there still is a modification in terms of the, uh, uh, the distance from the proposed fence uh, to the right-of-way line. Um, that's something we can take a look at here and see if... That was part of all those new fencing ordinances we just passed. Oh. Yeah, let's just talk about our fencing ordinance some more. <laughs> yeah, so to the fence, there's approximately 25 feet um, from the proposed right-of-way line to about where the fence is. So because it's technically in the front yard setback, um, there's a 50-foot front yard setback. Um, there's a limit on, on fences in a front yard setback. How do you feel about not having the piers, Patrick? Um, well, I think having the piers, um, I think it makes it more decorative. That was one of 
the initial suggestions that we uh, put out there. If it doesn't have the piers, we're looking at just a long row of fence. There's no break in the, in the visibility of the fence. It's just gonna be one continuous um, of, of the same material, um, which can be pretty stark. I understand that the landscaping can help, especially having shrub rows and things like that. So the shrubs can help break that up if they're densely spaced and they're allowed to grow. Um, the minimum size of shrubs that have to be planted in Canton are 24 inches. So we could see some effect within the first uh, couple of planting years, uh, that'll help. Um, but having one long row of fence, just looking <clears throat> along the top of the fence, which the shrubs probably won't conceal, um, having the same material, it will have a little bit of a monotonous look. Uh, but that's, that's more of an aesthetic. Well, we're here to talk about aesthetics, so. Yeah, yeah. Um, so one example that I, that I kind of draw from and um, this is a little bit different because it's um, out in a different part of the township and this property is a con consent judgment, but um, looking at uh, Park West at the northeast corner of Ford and Ridge Road, um, and I'll put up a Google Street View there. This is just one example, whoops, lost it. There it is. Mm -hmm. So this is just one example of we're looking north on Ridge. They have piers and they have a fence there in the front. So the fence doesn't seem as much of a, of a security or a barrier because the columns of the masonry make it look more decorative. And um, I'll look at Ford Road because that's the frontage that gets the most traffic. You know, if we look down the long line of fence there, um, you know, there's a couple hundred feet of fence there, but it's, um, it's easy not to notice that's a couple hundred feet because roughly about every 40 feet there's some kind of a pier, some kind of a break in the fence that um, doesn't seem as much of a, you know, like you're fencing something in and securing something. Like if, if we see a long expanse of fence here for security, a lot of times we're looking at a storage yard or an industrial use or a commercial use where you're trying to create some kind of a barrier. Um, to, to put a fence along um, around a residential development is a little unusual. Um, not, not unheard of, but a little unusual, a little uncommon, because even in Park West, they don't have the gated entrance there. So it is public entrance, but um, by enclosing it, it's just one of those things we wanna be careful with where not necessarily to prohibit fencing or prohibit a barrier, even a gated access, if it was okay with public safety, but just the appearance of it from the road and making it not look as secluded. Now this one doesn't have any landscaping in front of it. Correct, it's right, got the- they, they would have some bushes in front of it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we, right now, I don't know if you're able to pull up the landscape plan, Patrick, but we're proposing a continuous row of shrubs um, as well as some, some um, overhead canopy trees. And I think by, you know, varying the species of trees, even just, you know, offsetting them so that they're not in a continuous line, maybe there's, you know, undulation with how we lay those out, you know, we could reach that you know, varied aesthetic and the, you know, the, the landscaping would soften the, uh, the ornamental fence. So there are places where you're showing shrubs in front and canopy trees, but those little, those little circles at the top there, are, I think are, um, at least if they're the same as what's below, they're like evergreen trees. PAG is, uh, that is a Norway spruce. So those are evergreen trees behind the fence. Those are not in front of the fence. Correct. Patrick, are you able to zoom out? And then that's the same at the lower, at the far south side of that same plan that you've got a bunch of uh, evergreen trees behind the fence and not in, nothing in front of it. That's correct. Um, the intention of those was, you know, to provide added privacy to that residential building. Mm -hmm. um, we'd be happy to add you know, a, a row of shrubs in front of the fence in both of those areas that, that you had pointed out. I think some, some shrubs would be nice. You know, ultimately it's a, you know, I'd say a, they're in this, you know, they're in the, there's a sanitary sewer easement running through there, and Jared can probably speak to this, you know, in greater detail. Um, but ultimately, it's, you know, a cost, a cost impact 
uh, you know, to install those is, um, you know, significant. And we feel like, you know, that, you know, the money could be spent better elsewhere, you know, accommodating the other requests from staff and that, you know, we can achieve, you know, a varied look along lots without introducing a, a masonry pier every 40 feet. Right. Can you can you talk into the mic? Yeah. Just Oops. Sorry. That's okay. So I was suggesting maybe smaller piers or do something that, that would be a compromise in mm -hmm. between both things. Maybe you can get more creative and just put the piers maybe towards the entrance more on both sides. <coughs> okay. Uh, Patrick, could you bring that list up again, please? <clears throat> then the next page. <coughs> I, I so the parking spaces. It sounds like you don't feel like that you could do twenty-two feet on most of them, but yeah, there's a couple that that wouldn't work. Right, Patrick. Do you mind pulling up the site plan, please? Yep, this is good. So in particular, you can see here above Building Two. Yep, right where Patrick's mouse is there. That's a 19 foot dimension. So from the face of garage to the edge of sidewalk is 19 feet. And staff's recommendation is that is, is 22 feet. We feel like the 19 feet plus the additional five um, for the sidewalk um, puts us at 24 feet from the face of garage uh, to the face of the curb. Now we need to accommodate uh, pedestrians walking across that sidewalk. You know, we certainly don't want a truck you know, blocking their path. But, you know, if a standard parking stall is, is 20 foot depth, we feel like that should be adequate for someone to pull in, park in front of their garage door, uh, and not block the pedestrian path. Um, but in what? most areas, we can accommodate the 22 feet. Ultimately, uh, really until Jared gets into doing the design, it's, it's difficult to understand exactly, uh, you know, the exact sp spaces, but but generally speaking, uh, if you zoom way out with all the site constraints we have, kind of setting our limits around the outside, the conservation easement, the floodplain, et cetera, <laughs> um, we're not sure that we can accommodate that 22 feet everywhere. So we're looking for you know a middle ground there. Maybe it's 20 feet. Is there one that has 17? Yeah, there's one that has even less than that. It's like seven feet. The one to, if you look at zoom back in, Patrick. Yeah. The one to the, the far left. Yep. That so those is so small. Yeah. So the end, and that is one of the one of staff's recommendations that we did not bold was to provide some sort of signage or striping on those end caps um, to so that people don't park there because they are they are small. So that that will be added. Uh, okay. On those two end ones. Yeah. To to clarify, um, there are eight garage spaces shown for each of the buildings. Mm -hmm. uh, there are only six proposed driveway parking spaces available because the outer two spaces don't have enough depth, not even close. There's, right. there's nothing that we can do to adjust that to make that work. So those, the end spaces are gonna be striped out as no parking. Okay. Then two of the remaining six spaces or driveways on each of the buildings are right at that 19 feet. Four of them are already meeting the 22 foot criteria because uh, you can see the, the spaces either side of that 19 foot dimension already have a step back. So they already have extra feet to them. It's just the two spaces that we're talking about per building that don't meet that 22 foot requirement. And the ordinance actually specifies that it's 22 feet from the, uh, from the garage to the edge of the road. In this case, we're talking about to the back of the sidewalk. If you take it to the edge of the road as written in the ordinance, we actually have 24 feet, so we're technically meeting that requirement already. Oh, yeah, could you please state your name for the record? Sorry. Jared Kime with Atwell. Thank you. Okay. 
Uh, what's our next on the list? We got the fence. We kind of already talked about that, right? I'd, that's a different well, fence? That's the chain link versus the decorative fence around the back of the property. Yeah, I think we should have something decorative on the, around the back. I think you want to keep the people that are living on the back happy. Patrick, there, in, in our slide deck at the end, there were some exhibits that we had prepared um, to discuss the fence item here, if you don't mind. Uh, yeah, so beyond this one, there's a number of uh, slides with photos. Keep going, keep going. <coughs> Next, so this one, if you don't mind zooming in here. So to your point, yes, we can, we can appreciate the visibility of the fence from the east side. And so what, we, uh, what we're hoping for is that um, planning commission would be open to decorative along lots and then decorative on the east side adjacent to those stub roads that Patrick had mentioned and then fronting the conservation easement and then fronting the floodplain and wetland and stormwater area, both less visible areas, that would be the vinyl coated chain link fence. You know, there's a lot that is really nice looking about this setup that you have. I hate to have you kind of cheapen it by not having a nice fence everywhere. You know, I would say, uh, I don't know if cheapen it is the right um, mm. word here. I, I don't think that our residents. Affordable, oh, that's nice, affordable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we have, we have uh, so I should mention if I didn't already, Continental operates all of its communities. So we, you know, collect data from our residents on what they, you know, what they have problems with, what they do and don't like. And it's very typical for us to use a chain link around the perimeter. Uh, and as Patrick mentioned, there'll also be the chain link around the pet playground. Um, we feel, you know, the, the cost difference between the chain link and the ornamental, it's, a, it's about $65 a foot. It's nice, it's nice, it's not. Use your mic, please. Use your mic. So you think it'll look nicer? Yes, I've used it in commercial projects before, in military projects where it was actually coated. There might be some things you can do to give it a little bit of flair, but it's basically black. It's not the, 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 uh, the galv, just of. exposed gotcha. galvanized, or with the waving, you know, stuff right. in it, so. Okay. Then, I'm sorry, apparently I have a lot, sorry. The, the sign, I'm, I, what's this typical sign of a sign on Ford Road and everybody's able to read it pretty easily, right? Uh, 24 square feet. Yeah, I don't have any trouble reading a, I'm flying down Ford Road and I can read it. You so fly I, down Ford Road? No, I never go on Ford Road, <laughs> by God, it's dangerous. Um, but, but to me, then it kind of feels like, I think it, You know, I, I wish I had included a, Patrick, are you able to pull up a graphic of our sign? I know you have a, a, a bunch it, of pictures. Yeah, if you have it in the packet. It may just be the, the layout, um, the way we've arranged the letters. You know, are there letters on all 24 or 32 square feet? No. You know, if you draw a box around the area, then it is, you know, a greater uh, square footage. I think they're nice looking. So this would be the 32 square foot. And again, I, I apologize, there's brick on this here, but you know, in the, we, the masonry would match our architecture. Right. I think the last thing that I wanted to mention is I looked on your website and saw a lot of the different areas that you've built things. And they're all very, I think, light colored and bright. And then I looked at ours and it's brown and it's dark and it didn't make me feel very fuzzy. Thank you. You're, you're, you're <laughs> great for me today. Uh, yeah, it just, I felt Midwestern and I did not want to feel Midwestern. <laughs> it's funny you say that. Uh, so we have, um, we, we create the, the color palette uh, for a Midwest portfolio. Yeah. Um, 
This is unique, so this color palette would be one of one, but generally goes along the lines of, you know, something we typically construct in the Midwest. You may have been looking at a Florida property or something. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. yeah. There were a lot did, of palm trees. There were, but I did see some Illinois ones that I thought didn't look. It's just dark. Yeah. I love the part where you threw a little blue in. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we we can certainly. He I appreciate blue, that comment, just, and we can yeah. look. We can take a look at you know color adjustments yeah, to it lighten just seems it up. Dark. And it, you know, ultimately, when it's you know constructed, we could provide other three D. These may have been in your packet, but the three D renderings could provide an alternative perspective. I'm not sure that these elevations read super well. They may just be looking darker. Yeah, that here. might be. It doesn't look as dark when it's in person. They look dark. <laughs> That's my professional opinion. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anything yeah, else? Because then the porches then just look really dark with the. And that's prob that's probably the like a function of the line weight here that you're looking at graphically on the and sheet was, of paper. I think because those are all, uh, you know, when they're constructed, I'm not sure that they would, you know, feel that heavy or dark on the yeah. front. Yeah, of they've the building, got right? heavy shadows on. I mean, the on the flip side, I think it looks like a place that would be great to live. You know, it's got it's great amenities, place that I could see people 24 to 34 having a, have a kind of great start. Um, so it just feels like we've got to get some kind of tweaking done here. But thank you. And yeah, appreciate thank it. You thank you. For the commissioner's allowing me to go over so many things. Well, our pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Singh. Thank you. I think from that same list, we... Uh, we were talking about the sidewalks where you guys warned three and a half feet and it's proposed at five. If I recall, then most of our sidewalks are three and a half feet, I think, in the neighborhoods. But here we are asking for a wider. Um, the, uh, the ordinance requires five. So along major streets, they're five. On interior roads, they're five. Um, most interior areas, they're five. There may be some where... Um, like a, if a single family home has a walkway from the porch to the road sidewalk, that may be a little narrower, but uh, five foot width is the typical standard. And I think five, five is reasonable too. And when two people are crossing each other, you, know, you need that kind of a width. Yeah, so again, uh, we went back to the drawing board after Patrick had given us his comment. So you can see here an exhibit that um, Jared and Atwell had prepared for us. Um, again, you know, it's not typical for us to do five feet throughout and have not found, you know, residents have not taken issue with that or, or had issues passing each other simultaneously. But, you know, if, if five feet is desired, um, we'd like to propose um, for the direct access off of what I'll call the spine sidewalk or the, the primary sidewalk, maintaining the three and a half feet. And that way, you know, it feels more private. It doesn't feel like it's, you know, an opening for anyone to walk up to the individual patios. And then elsewhere, we would, we would accommodate the five feet. I'd be good with that. I mean, I appreciate your desire not to have more impervious area, but I also... I also think about walking, even a five foot sidewalk can be a little narrow if somebody's got a couple of kids or a dog, you know, and somebody's coming the other way, yeah. But I agree, I think five. Yeah. Through the, the, through the bulk of the community, but yeah. the private walk, I'll call them private walks for lack of a better term, I think are appropriate at three and a half. Yeah. Okay. So just so that we're clear about this exhibit, just for the sake of the record, so the red ones that go to individual units, those are three and a half. But the major one, the collector, I'll call it, that goes through the middle, would that be increased from three and a half to five? Correct. <clears throat> so whatever remains is uncolored here. If it's three and a half, it would be <coughs> widened to five feet. Correct. And another thing, Patrick, we... Um we were talking about this being a rental um, plan now, and I remember the first one was a rental uh, PDD also where they were originally. So it, the rental part was also approved um, once. So it's not like it is something we are changing now. or um, So it has been approved before. I know there was 
a question about that, that it is becoming a business, but this thing was pre-approved as such. Correct. Um, other than that, I think I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, I do agree with Commissioner Eggenberger that we need more life, more colors, and I know our chairperson will talk about it in length. <laughs> <laughs> At length? <laughs> and, uh, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, Commissioner Singh. All right, Commissioner Lee. Um, I, I like it overall. Um, I agree with the color too, because I, I had a problem. I'm a more brick guy, and it looks like you cut, appears to me in some areas you cut corners to save money. I mean, it's part of your design, so I can't really fight that. You know, it's good. Did I see a sign for a car wash? Is that correct? Um, so not a car wash. It is a uh, car care um, center is what we call it. So if you can go to our site, yep. So um, there is a, uh, an overhang on our maintenance building where residents can pull their car up and we provide a vacuum for them to detail their car and then they can you know, wash their car here as well. And then within that same structure, there's also a um, pet wash station. So that is why it's located adjacent to the pet playground. So on a muddy day, a resident could wash their dog off before taking them back, back inside. That's so that's amenity. a separate thing from the car wash? The pet Correct. wash. So okay. the, uh, so, yep, so that is exactly where it is, um, as well as the uh, pet, the, uh, the pet wash station, and then this, on the back elevation, there's an additional overhang just for outdoor seating near the pet playground. Uh, good amenity. Uh, the other one I ask, uh, I have is, um, you're primarily a rental. Will this ever convert to ownership at some point? I'm thinking in the future. Would that be something? Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I can't speak to, you know, way down the line in terms of uh, continental properties. We only, um, uh, you know, own and operate rental properties. Okay, um, that's so, cool. That was yeah, my question. There's no, you know, no intention currently of, of continental to... Um, okay you know, sell these individually as condominiums or anything like that. Okay. Overall, I like it. I think it's a little dark too, but uh, overall, it's a good project. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Watkins? I'll be quick. You can just stay there, Jordan, real quick. So um, very quickly, Patrick, I won't ask you to go back to a bunch of different stuff, but if we can go just to one, the one site plan. Northbound, Lots Road, I don't see, I'm um, doing my best, Alan, uh, excuse me, Commissioner Cruz impression, uh, I, I don't see a desale lane coming into 280 units. Um, and I guess this is a question for Atwell. Um, tell me how you guys got around that. There is no desale lane there for 280 units that are you know, in, this, in this development. So that's, for me, like a non-starter almost. Go ahead. So technically, uh, we would actually defer to Fleece and Van Brink, our traffic study uh, consultants who prepared the study. Uh, the traffic study showed that it did not warrant the a full right turn decel lane. Um, it just requires the standard uh, decel treatment there at at the entrance, which is uh, you know a ten foot straight section and a fifty foot transition, uh, and that's due to the the configuration of the site with the center left turn lane on the property and it only warranted uh, some updates to the signal timing uh, at uh, Ford Road, so. All right, I'll, I'll take your word for it. Pa Defer Patrick, to the experts. Got it, and then second, um, we've got the, the fencing loop. You've heard that, you, we know what needs to happen there already. And then the third thing is, if you can go back to the clubhouse, do I see signage on three sides of your clubhouse that promotes the springs and you already have a monument sign on the ground? Yeah, so we are proposing um, what we call a tower sign on, on the three faces, uh, north, west, and, and south um, of the tower sign. Yeah, I don't, I don't think we have clubhouses in any development that I can think of in Kent that has signage that, that promotes the brand at all. That's all. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Commissioner Lee, did you have something else to add? Um, it struck me. I'm, I'm sorry. I should have thought of this. Um, when I come out of Home Depot onto lots, there's a traffic jam there many times. I mean, many times. Uh, I don't know if the light signaling is off, and now you're adding a residential development. Are Excuse you talking me, about going speak. to Ford Road, the Ford Road and lots yeah, intersection? Yeah, right at Thank Ford you. Road. Okay. It's, a, it's a jam because I, 
I can go down and go into Home Depot, but when I come out, I try to avoid that just for that reason, because I know there's a jam already. So I'm already thinking, okay, <laughs> it may not be a problem getting into your development, but coming out, I can see your residents complaining a lot because that's already doing that. And there's no, there's no traffic below Home Depot right now. Yeah, Just I mean, so you know. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. We, we certainly want to address any traffic concern. Like Jared had mentioned, we brought in um, Fleece and Vandenbrink to do a traffic study. Um, the, the only recommendation they had from that traffic study was to improve signal timing at Ford and Lot. So that's something that we will do. Um, you know, as for, you know, I'll defer to the engineers for what will and won't work ultimately. Okay. Uh, yeah. I have a question. Patrick, do, do these uh, experts take into account what is coming up in future? We have mm -hmm. Bob Canton coming up there, and a lot of people will so avoid many roads, but go on lots of roads. The, the data they used incorporated the anticipated traffic data from Top Canton. It's actually the same traffic engineer that on that project as well. So um, that's being considered. That's handy. <coughs> okay. Understood. He doesn't have one. We need another mic up here. Yeah, we really need another mic up here. Patrick. <laughs> Next month, I promise, yeah. Um, um, so with regard to no diesel land, I should have thought of it too, so I, I commend Commissioner Watkins for bringing it up. Um, we are going to have the top golf development on the other side, at least we think we will. There's other things going to be happening with Ford Road. I think Lots Road going north is going to get even more use. And to not have a diesel lane going into this development I think is a huge mistake. I'm sorry, I don't agree with the experts on, the experts on this. I just, um, numbers can show a lot of things, but I don't often think they show reality sometimes. Um, so I, I, I think it's absolutely necessary that a diesel lane should be there. Um, as for the, the signage on your tower, if we allow that, then I think there should be no problem going down to the 24 square foot monument sign. I don't think you should have, I don't think you should have both. Um, those those okay. are my additional comments. My turn. That's okay. Um, I have a question about all the street names. They're all the same. Right. Does that get a little confusing for wayfinding? No. So our so we have we'll have wayfinding internally. Um, our preference actually is to have one so that there's not individual street names for all of those you know small segments of street. Mm -hmm. Typically, we'll have. Uh, you know, Continental's preference would be to have a uh, single street name and then everything being addressed off of the clubhouse. And then again, internally, we'll have wayfinding signage directing, you know, residents or guests, you know, mm -hmm. where to find which building. Okay. Um, and then units are based off of uh, building number, floor, and then, um, you know, unit on that floor. Okay. And uh, just to interject, ultimately, um, after the process, we may require additional street names. After we talk to our land records person um, and we talk to the fire marshal, there may be additional street names that are required for addressing purposes. So it, it would be more of an administrative item, um, but we would, there may be street names added in the future if addressing becomes an issue or location becomes an issue. Okay. Good, because it, it seems confusing to me. I don't like, I have driven through developments like this where you're looking for numbers and it gets it gets a little bit confusing and, and it's, it's difficult if you're the only person in your car and you're trying to find a particular number and you're reading all the signs that, you know, this number here, this number that, it, it can be confusing, so. Um, I agree. I, I have some con some concerns about a gated community. Um, Commissioner Foster brought this up a little bit. Um, I, I see that the gate is actually behind the clubhouse or adjacent to the clubhouse. Um, so you can get to the clubhouse without going through the gate. Tell me if I'm going to visit someone in this subdivision, how do I, or in the, in the development, how do I get in? Yeah. So one of two options, again, you could park at the clubhouse and enter through the club. We have, um, on-site staff there that could direct you to wherever you're going. Otherwise you can, 
um, call at the gate and they can let you in through the so gate. But there are, um, there are, you know, again, guest parking spaces in front of the gate uh, that could accommodate uh, guests. Okay, so my friend in building 12 is having a big party um, and everybody comes to the gate at a close, you know, within a half hour of the starting time. How does that, how does traffic get handled like that? I mean, if I call and, and he's got loud music on and he can't hear me, I mean, <laughs> so I right, just have I mean, to park in the club. Yeah, yeah. I, it, I with, do, right? regarding so, that, I mean, I think the Yoki machine, the scale of this, you may not be able to see. We can accommodate, you know, I'd say five cars stacking there without it spilling into lots. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we also provide the turnaround, right? And in the event that you pull up to the gate and you can't get in, you're not blocking traffic and you can um, pull around. But uh, we, yeah, we don't have like a, a pin pad punch in for guests. I'm not sure that we would wanna be handing that out anyways. So it's just communicating with whoever you're coming to visit. And that is the intention of the gate, right? So that uh, if you're not communicating with whoever you're coming to visit, they're not able to enter the community. Okay. Not, not thrilled about that, but um, don't know that we can uh, oppose it. I don't know. Um, are you, do you have any plans to include EV chargers? Uh, so currently, no, uh, we, we don't have plans to include EV chargers. Okay. And I agree with what Commissioner Weber just said about the signs on the tower, that if you have both that and the ground monument, it seems, it seems silly to say that you have to have a bigger ground monument. It really does seem, you know, um, like if there's a huge sign on three sides of the clubhouse tower, that's a pretty big sign. So um, I, I don't know what the commission feels about the fence uh, and, and what we've decided about that. Um, I agree. I, I agree with Patrick that a long, um, a long expanse of decorative fencing without piers looks a little bit cheap or looks a little bit boring. Um, I don't know whether we agree that on that or whether we wanna um, change the, the um, landscape plan or what, what we wanna talk about here. What, what did other people feel? Landscaping itself was, was accepted because they said it didn't fit, but when I looked at it, look, I probably need to look at it better, but it was pretty sparse. I think mm -hmm. you can still put more plants on there. Mm -hmm. And then in regards to the, the actual piers on the fence, um, I'm thinking maybe there's a compromise where, you know, maybe part of the outer skirts, maybe you put trees mm -hmm. in certain segments to, to, so you don't get that, that linear feeling across mm -hmm. there. And then maybe smaller piers or something on the interior part. Okay. Patrick, we, we did have a, a last slide um, that, sh that showed uh, piers adjacent to our entrance gate. I think we could kind of use this as a starting point for, you know, potential solution along Lots Road. So, um, you know, we hear you on the, on the piers. So, you know, one idea would be to have masonry piers uh, adjacent to the entrance gate um, with a you know, with a, with a landscape solution along Lots Road, uh, you know, or in the event that uh, piers are desired, you know, a, a smaller, shorter pier um, to align with the, you know, reduced fence height at four feet, uh, you know, maybe spaced every uh, wider spacing, so maybe every 80 feet or, or something along those lines, because it is pretty long along Lots Road there. Um, so I think with an introduction of some masonry pier element plus you know, adjusted planting design that we could create something nice along lots. Okay, I like that. Thank you. Um, anything else from the commission? Anybody have anything more? Okay. Anybody want to make a motion?
I know. Yeah. <laughs> Through the chair, Madam Chair. So we don't have our attorney here tonight, but I, I think what's clear is she's oh oh she's she's, she's the invisible. Consultant. Ah, fantastic. Okay, well, great, guys. Come on, you got to help me out here. I'm uh, got it. So clearly, the motion is going to involve quite a few changes that um, then our our model motion can handle. So um, I'm of the opinion that we should. Should, again, this sounds like something that we're going to need to bring back. Uh, so, Patrick, would you help us as best we can and with our invisible counsel here um, <laughs> with what works well as it relates to the conversations that we've had tonight in order to have the right motion to bring this back? Thanks so much. Thank you, Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. So um, you're, you're suggesting we table it? Through the chair, yes. Well, we, can, we can approve the things that they agreed on. If I may, you know, so given our, our current development schedule, you know, I could appreciate all the comments and, you know, from the original time that we had submitted this to, the, you know, the development review committee and have been working with them, you know, we've been making uh, adjustments, um, you know, to accommodate all the desires of Canton Township. So from the original elevations we brought in, we've added masonry, um, you know, a nature trail, piers, sidewalks, et cetera. You know, we're on a tight timeline with um, some of our engineering related items um, that, you know, we would like assurance, you know, ultimately that Canton Township is in support. So, um, you know, our preference would be a motion, you know, a recommendation of approval with, you know, conditions as we've discussed here tonight. And, and we're certainly open to accommodating, accommodating all of those. <laughs> Does anyone? Well, I think I'm, I'm going to... So on the one, the one, the one revising the PDD agreement, satisfactory to legal counsel is fine. Uh, number two, um, reducing the internal drive width to 22 feet instead of 24 feet, um, where appropriate. Um, did we agree on yeah. a compromise of 20 feet? Uh, 22 for the drive Tw width. Okay. Yeah, the number seven. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Patrick, do you Sorry. mind pulling up the um, on the screen the, the items? Number three was uh, adding modification for unit landscaping ba based on the upper units only. We didn't talk about that. Well, I think those are the ones. Yeah, we're, we can accommodate. Yep, we'll do that. Yeah. Yep, I'm just, I gotta go through all these because these are all in the model motion. Um, number four is is about the fence, the five foot vents. We talked about that. So you wanna reduce it to four feet. Yep, so it would allow for a four foot high fence in the front yard area. Um, and then, you know, uh, whatever, the, you know, the commission feels is appropriate regarding the masonry piers, whether that's every 60 or 80 feet. There is no mention of height or anything in this motion, but we obviously per, wouldn't want them to be per, shorter than the fence. Personally, I want the piers. I mean, we can, we, can, we can debate what they should look like and the distance and that sort of thing, but I think there needs to be piers. Um... Can we change the motion language to every 60 or 80 feet? Eighty to me, eighty is unacceptable. Okay. Ballpark, maybe like 800. Yeah, I'd have to. That's excluding the drives. And again, you know, we can, we're happy to um, add that additional landscaping on the north and south sides in front of the fence. So if they went, if they have 800 linear feet, take, put 200, 200, where they have the piers at regular intervals at 40 feet, they could be smaller and then out towards the edges, you can take the landscaping and roll it off. I don't know. I don't know if I'm picturing it visually correct inside my head. I think it'll look good if, but if you get 
This is one of those things that I, I almost need to see it before I can say what what works. Through the chair, Madam Chair, I, I think one of the things, and I, I, I want to suggest to my fellow commission members that this is, again, as I said before, I think this is something that we don't want to model and craft real time. I think we'd like to take some opportunity, understand it, allow it to be digested by the developer, and then bring this back in 30 days or less to be able to then clearly, clearly, clearly understand what's going to happen here. And that, that time frame shouldn't um, negate the developer's ability to be able to pull this off at the start time that they'd well, like to do so. So I want to address that point about, because I, 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 to be blunt, I get tired when applicants come in and, and say that we have this timeline we have to meet for construction. I get that. Um, but we, gotta make, we have a job to do to make sure we're doing the right thing for the township as well. Um, we'll do everything we can to accommodate that request, but a lot of these things are visual in nature. And me personally, I, I consider myself to be more of a visual person. Um, to talk about aesthetics and, and that sort of thing, I really need to see what it's going to look like before I, I can say, yeah, we'll, we'll approve this pending uh, modification of this, pen, modification of that, and then we're told, well, you approve that, and then it turns out not being what we thought it was going to be. So I, I, I'm i sorry. I, I, my feeling is it needs to be brought back after, after some of these modifications have been made. I can speak a little bit to the schedule uh, coming forward. So in terms of the board schedule, because as we noted earlier, the PD and the site plan have to go to the board. Uh, the board typically meets the second and the fourth Tuesday of every month. Um, the meeting for next Tuesday, that agenda is already closed. Um, the, the fourth Tuesday of the month, the 27th, there's actually not a board meeting because there's an election that day. So the next available board meeting is Tuesday, March 12th. Um, should this application or these applications be deferred to the March Planning Commission meeting, which is March 4th, if there's action at that meeting, there's an outside chance we may have something for March 12th board meeting, if not um, March 26th. So in other words, the earliest possible this would be before the board would be March 12th, regardless of whether something happens tonight or not in terms of a motion moving it forward. Are, are we having a second meeting this month? Uh, there's a work session scheduled for the 26th. Um, because of election related business, we may not have the boardroom. We, we may be in a different room in this building, but right now we have a meeting planned for the 26th. It's a work session, but we make, could we make that yeah. a public meeting? We can, yes. I mean, we don't have to have the public hearing again, correct? Right. The public hearing is done. So when we notice it, we would just notice the proper room that the planning commission will be meeting in. Would we, be, we can do that, that. Would that be acceptable? To come on the 26th. Yes. Yes. And Madam Chair, move to um, move this to our next available meeting on the 26th. Second. That, that said, yeah, could we, mm -hmm. just, do you yeah. mind just, I'd, I'd like to know from the commissioners ultimately what you're looking for so that we can prepare the proper drawings by the 26th. Yeah, I, I just did the calculation. If you truly have 80 or 800 feet of fence, if, if we have them at the piers at 40 feet, that would be 20, well, 21 piers, I guess, technically. And if we have them at, at 60 feet, that would be 14 piers. It's not that many different. You're going to have somebody out there. Right. I mean, I think you could look at it both ways. Yeah. Um, you know, if, the, if commission, the planning commission is open to it, we could prepare an elevation. Yeah. We love pictures. Yeah. We do love pictures. We do. Um, yeah, I think that if, if for me, I mean, I think we need to see some pictures of that. Yep. Okay. Um, I think for the other items, could you go to the next page there, Patrick, please? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the parking spaces we talked about, I think we're all good with that, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then the chain link versus the decorative fence. I like your compromise of doing the decorative fence at the back too, because I can. I'm concerned about the neighbors in Westland and how close they are to that property line and the fence. Um, I think putting chain link would be would be detrimental for them. Yep. Okay. Um, the ground sign. I guess you know. I I would say um, 24 square feet should be sufficient, given that the tower signage 
or we get rid of the tower signage. Okay, we we can we can accommodate the twenty four. Okay. And then the, the sidewalk, we already compromised on that. The, the feeder sidewalks, the little sidewalks going to individual units, no problem. But the wider one, the, the ones that service the, mm -hmm. the trunk lines, I guess, whatever you call them, um, five feet we talked about. Is there any, was there anything else after this? Well done there. Okay. Good, good summary. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah. would be helpful. Um, I think that was it, right? We mm -hmm. talked about the street names, we talked about the gated community, how we feel about that. Um, all, the all the colors, yes. Yeah, we can bring in some color samples. If you guys Could want we to look, look at them. some yeah. more cheerful colors yeah. too? We may not be in Florida, but perhaps we'd like to look like we are. Maybe we would like to think we're in Miami Beach. So it's the, it's the brown tones, just, yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, we, the, don't want, we don't want the pink. No. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but yeah, I think we're, I think that was what I, what I reacted to as well. <laughs> no Easter egg colors, but <laughs> yeah. Right. So we have a motion on the Florida table by Commissioner Watkins. Can anyone support, uh, support by Weber? Okay. Uh, any further discussion? And uh, just to clarify that the reasons for tabling were spoken by the planning commissioners related to signage, fencing, piers, Mostly uh, architecture. Mostly fencing and piers and the colors. Mm -hmm. Architecture. So those were all discussed during the discussion period of the motion. Correct. As far as yeah, I, I would recall. Say everybody's pretty excited about this. It's just. Yeah. So, uh, Commissioner Eggenberger, could you call the vote, please? Oh, right. Big job here. Uh, Commissioner Eggenberger, um, yes. Commissioner, Commissioner Foster? Yes. Commissioner Janowski? Yes. Commissioner Lee? Yes. Commissioner Singh? Yes. Commissioner Watkins? Yes. Commissioner Weber? Yes. Chairperson Duber? Yes. All right, very good. So we will table this, but we will see you back again in two weeks. Thank you very much. Thanks. All right. Thank you. And uh, staff will coordinate with the applicants on these items too. So uh, we'll work with the applicants and start on this right away and hopefully have it ready for the 26th. Okay, awesome, thank you. All right, so our second item on the agenda is for Walmart on Michigan Ave. Uh, the item number is 132-PDDA-8072 and 132-DIR-8112. We are considering a PDD amendment and site plan for said parcels at 4555, Mich 45555 Michigan Ave. The property is located, as we know, at the southwest corner of Michigan Ave and Belleville Road. The current use is a retail store and proposed <coughs> DDD, PDD amendment is to reduce the number of required parking spaces. And um, there are also, they're also proposing some associated parking lot layout changes and building modifications. I just I just elevated you to the planning commission. I know. Commissioner. Honored. <laughs> Patrick, I don't know. It's probably a degradation. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> anyway, Patrick, please tell us more. Uh, sure. Um, I'll just summarize what's in our staff report. Uh, there's two uh, different requests here that we combined into one staff report just because of the timing of them both. The first is the PDDA, the PDD amendment. And that one is to reduce the number of parking spaces for the Walmart site itself from 625 down to 594. The previous PDD amendment lowered the minimum number of parking spaces for the Walmart portion of that site to 625. So to get a further reduction, it does require a PDD amendment. The reason for reducing 31 spaces is to account for cart corrals within the lot as well as to add pickup spaces. Those pickup spaces tend to be wider to allow for loading on the sides of the vehicles. So when pickup spaces are added, uh, the part number of parking spaces are reduced. Um, what we've observed in the community is that that actually lowers the demand for parking spaces because when someone goes to a pickup space, they're there for five or 10 minutes instead of 45 when they go into the store. Um, and we've got some numbers in our staff report from um, Institute of Transportation Engineers parking analysis or a parking generation manual, the sixth edition, that shows that um, the 
uh, demand for similar size big box stores, uh, parking demand is typically lower. And based on our review of about 30 aerial photos over the last, say, nine years, the parking levels never approach capacity. So we think that we could safely reduce the number of parking spaces to 594 and still have plenty of excess <laughs> parking in the future. Um, there is a uh, vacant area, or there's a parking lot, uh, about 35 spaces in that northeast corner that someday we may uh, see an application to repurpose it. There's no pending plans or proposed plans, but it is kind of out there where it looks kind of like an outlaw, like the Panda Express and the Chipotle that we had a few years ago. So um, that's one area where in the future we may see a further reduction. But Are you talking about behind the bank or adjacent to the bank at the corner? Right, okay. yeah, just south of the bank here. Okay, thank you. So there's about 35 spaces there. That's part of that 594 proposed. Um, we would recommend a further reduction in the future if they were to propose an outlaw there, but um, that's just kind of looking ahead. Um, the other request is, um, an actual site plan modification request to do some modifications to the building. Um, that's the uh, case that's the uh, DIR, which stands for Developer Instigated Revision. And uh, this request is to add a canopy over the door on the east side of the front of the building, uh, which is near the lawn and garden area. Uh, we recommend approval of that. It's a minor modification. It's outside of all the setback areas and architecturally that canopy looks nice. Um, the the uh, facade renovations also include proposing a 3M film over some of the EFIS areas. Um, assuming our building division is okay with the application of that, we're okay with putting a, a 3M film over EFIS areas. Um, the area of the proposal that we disagree with is uh, painting the um, split face block. Uh, there are several areas of the the color elevations that you see where there's proposed painting, the painting is indicated with a letter P and then a number or a series of letters and numbers after it. And there's a lot of uh, integrally colored split face block on the building. And when the building was originally approved, um, it was approved with that block. And um, it's important to note that when we look at plans here, um, especially when there's a split face block or there's a smooth face block, when it's integrally colored, um, we look at that because we don't want it painted. We want the color to be part of the material itself so that it doesn't have to be painted. And so um, that's why we're more averse to painting block when it's integrally colored, just because that was the original intent of having that color and material go with the facade. And it's something almost like picking a brick color is once you pick the color, that's the color we don't wanna see it painted. Um, so the amount of the split face block that's on the building, if that were to be painted based on that quantity, it would almost look like a poured concrete wall um, that's been painted. When it's painted, you lose those grout lines, you lose that contrast in the color. So that's why we disagree with painting uh, the split face block. So uh, staff's recommendation on the uh, PDD uh, proposal, we recommend approval of the proposed PDD amendment, amendment number four, to reduce the number of parking spaces to the ratio proposed by the applicant, which is uh, a ratio of 3.44 parking spaces per thousand square feet, which gets them down to that 594. Uh, further, we recommend approval of the site plan amendment for the building elevation changes, uh, subject to the condition that none of the integrally colored split face block or other masonry may be painted. Um, the reason we uh, recommend that is that the block, um, instead of being painted, it should be maintained instead, washed, uh, scrubbed to bring out the natural color and to maintain it, not just to paint, which is more of a concealer. Sometimes for deferred maintenance, it conceals. So um, that's staff's recommended motion. Um, and at this point, we'll be happy to take any questions. I have a question. I, I'm studying these elevations, and I got I glanced at them earlier. I'm not clear where the canopy, the, there's a detail at the top of sheet A2, uh, number seven, that shows the front of the canopy, and I'm just not clear where that is on the larger elevations, and I'm looking for it. Yeah, so. I think I found it on, yeah, I think it's, uh, I think I see the call out for it, 782 down at the bottom on the the front. So that's over, I couldn't tell on the plan if it was on the front or the side of the building. Okay, thank you. So that I was confused by that um, 
the panel in front of it. Okay. Yeah, that's what confused me is that screen. Could you go to the mic, sir? Yeah, please do. I move that we open the public hearing. Second. All right. We have a motion to support. By, we, we have a motion by Commissioner Weber and support by Commissioner Watkins to open the public hearing. Any, any? Uh, let's vote in favor of that. All in favor, say aye. 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 Sorry. Anybody opposed? All right, sir. Could you please tell us who you are for the record? Yeah, I am Steve Kendall. I'm with Carlson Consulting Engineers. Uh, we are uh, civil consultants for Walmart. Uh, and uh, we are based in Bartlett, Tennessee, which is a suburb of Memphis. Mm. So I'm glad to be here tonight, and thank you for getting us on the agenda. Ah, <clears throat> the, I see now. There it is right there. Patrick's, yeah. Patrick and I have been uh, working on the PD amendment here for quite a while now, and I think we've got it done. The, the canopy is back on those double doors you see behind that along the face. Of the, yep. So really, with the... With the landscaping there, it's really a subdued uh, addition. What is and that? It's just canopy? to keep the rain off of those associates that are coming out with your groceries. Oh, so that's where the deliveries will be coming out. Yeah, so it's out. back behind uh, okay. that actual decorative wall there. It's back behind on the building wall. Thank you. Yep. And that's why you don't see it in those elevations well. Yeah, thank you, because I, I did look. Sure. Okay. Okay. As far as the color and the split face, <clears throat> Patrick and I had a little conversation about that. And, and being the civil engineer, I'm not speaking for the architects. Uh, Ed was not able to attend. He had another meeting tonight. Uh, but he did relay uh, to me <clears throat> the pressure of these big box uh, branding issues. Uh, when they rebrand occasionally, they redo their stores with new color schemes and the like. And this new scheme are the, I don't know if you've been traveling and see the new renovations, the remodels that have just gone through are all the light colors, the blues and the grays and the lighter colors. Uh, the block, when this was originally done, it's got the earth tones. And so right now, I guess, Patrick, if you zoom down to that main uh, entry, they're brown, it's, it's the brown, way on down to the Walmart. You see the Walmart on the uh, front. So it's all the earth tones, the browns, the tans, uh, that what? It looks Midwestern, uh, doesn't it? Right, the, the, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, again. Uh, so the, the split face itself, uh, there's a difference of opinion here because the split face maintains, because of the split face, even if you paint it, you can still tell it's masonry. Uh, because of the, the texture, it's a real rough split face. You've seen them on many Walmarts that you mm -hmm. go to. So the, if we don't paint this, <clears throat> the architect is cringing that now I can't make my store brand, you know, rebranded, which is a big deal for some reason uh, for them, the architects. But uh, the, the color scheme, if we don't stain, if we don't paint it, we stay with the earth tones. Uh, he's going to be limited to the color, we don't want a mismatch, right? So you're stuck with the, with the old earth tone store. So I would, I would just <coughs> request that you consider that uh, when you make a decision about whether that's uh, something you wanna restrict or not. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Welcome to Michigan. Anything else? <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Would anyone from the public like to speak to this? I move to close, close the public hearing. Support. All right. <laughs> and who supported that? Commissioner Lee. Okay. Uh, so we have motion to close the public hearing by Commissioner Weber and support by Commissioner Lee. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Excellent. Anybody want to say anything about this? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so you can Google anything. Did we consider uh, staining possibly? Um, we've seen stain applied in uh, other applications, um, and in some cases, stain is is better because it allows 
the product to breathe, but mm -hmm. depending on the, <laughs> the type of stain, it can also, if it's too dark, it can also stain the grout to almost the color of the block, so you'd still lose that grout line depending on what uh, kind okay. of stain is applied. So it uh, becomes a, a technical thing in terms of color mm -hmm. and, and how dark that stain is. And some areas, like what we don't know, is if, if the block were just to be power washed, like down from this downspout, we see where the water is discolored the block, but it's integrally colored. So if there was a power wash with, you know, whatever kind of cleaning treatment was with it, that may bring out the, co the original color, I don't know. We're pulling up images of yeah. other it, it Walmart stores. Nice. How, how is it working on the new ones? Can, can you pull up a new same. one? Like where are you? It's the same. Would, so, Mr. Singh, what did you Google to find that? Can you tell him? Uh, can you tell Walmart him? Walmart new color scheme. Okay, so <laughs> could you bring up a, a a Walmart new color scheme photo for us? It does. I mean, because it's hard to tell from the renderings, like you know, what the colors will really look like. And uh, in Canton, um, I'm, I'm looking for one now. Thank you. In Canton, um, unlike a lot of other communities, uh, we have two Walmarts. So if if something was approved for this one, we could probably expect the one on Ford Road to have the same application. It's good to know that Michigan Ave is ahead of Ford Road in some way. It was odd. I know. Yeah, the one in Livonia, I don't see paint on that one. Yeah. It's... Um... I think it's just Google new. Just, yeah, just Google new Walmart color scheme. Yeah, it pops right up. You don't like it? No. Oh, okay. Some of us <laughs> like it and some of us don't. No, it's already out of style. Just with it. <laughs> Come on. Not what I think. Of. Okay, well, this is the this is just the first color. This is just the first image that came up. Is yeah, that that's it. That's what it. we're talking about, sir? Yeah. That, okay, okay. So would you paint? Yeah. Be like Lowe's. I mean, that's not what it looks like on our <coughs> packet, but color is so, so hard to get into a two-dimensional rendering like this, so. Well, this uh, corner of the building, um, they're proposing a, an area about 20 feet wide, about 20 feet there, so about 400 square feet where it'd be a solid blue. Right. Um, so in that and color that, scheme, that, that blue would be about what's proposed and um, yeah. you know, some of this gray paint. Can we have the blue cloud around home and pharmacy? That'd be awesome. Right. Would the, blue, would the blue be part of the color? The blue is a proposed paint color in that corner there. Is that where they're that's proposing the uh, over film, right? Yeah. Um, the blue is the blue that's proposed is actually a paint. Oh, okay. Um, so I'll pull it back over here. Um, so that's that P76U. So oh, that indicates you. a paint color. So and this is split face block in this section here. So they'd be painting that block this. This blue and that color is Walmart blue. I don't know if it's branded Walmart blue, but it's according to the color legend, it is. Oh. They commissioned then, their own blue, and then the other parts would be painted gray, light gray, medium gray, and black gray. Oh, and there's a dark gray too. Looks like lifesavers. Any other colors. ways they could do this? Um, well, there's been nothing else proposed, so it's and, and I don't know what they're willing to offer instead of just painting the split face block. Um, one of the issues with painting it once it's painted, it's it can't be unpainted. It's there. I mean, I suppose it could be power washed off, but you know, once that color is applied to it.
that that color often soaks into the material. So once it's there, mm -hmm. yeah. In which case, you know, it's just painting over paint, and then um, whatever you know. Right now, it's gray and blue, but in the future, I don't know if the new brand is going to be you know 100 percent blue. I'm trying to figure out what ETR means. Existing to remain is that it's not a color; it's existing to remain. Well, how do our architects feel about this? So the brick, the brick color would be the same as it is. Am I understanding that correctly? Yeah, that's correct. The brick, um, the brick wouldn't be painted. So any of the brick that's on the building would remain. Okay. Um, let me take this off here. So it'd just be the uh, integrally, integrally colored split face block. Okay. Um, and there's a substantial amount of that. Yeah. Uh, if it was more of an accent material, it'd be a little bit different. If it was just some columns or piers. Uh, here and there, but there's a substantial amount. But the uh, the brick would remain. <coughs> uh, so I, I, you know, I don't have a problem with the color scheme at all. I just don't. I just don't know how I feel about painting the split face block too. I mean, paint the. You know, I I look at that image right there, and I'm like, wow, we've got two different color split face blocks and brick <laughs> that's multicolored. It's pretty awful. Um, when you look at it like this, but I have a real hard time picturing painting it. And we've had other other buildings paint masonry, right? And come back and ask for forgiveness instead. So um, I appreciate that we're seeing this before. What? Oh, yeah. Buff City, yeah. Didn't they paint there? I think they did. I mean, you don't find green brick. But I don't know that that was split face. A, oh, okay. So well, split okay. face uh, is rough textured, where I think that was just more. concrete block. Oh, I'm not okay. sure, but, yeah. you know. Yeah, with the uh, Buff City soap, and I'll see if I can, if Google Street View has an updated rendering of that. Um, that one, they had existing block, and it was a painted block. Oh. So they painted it from like a tan to a gray to match their branding. But then they put in some um, brick veneer, which it didn't have brick. But they put in some brick veneer at the bottom just to kind of match what was there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I heard an opinion down at that end. Commissioner Janowski said he doesn't like the colors. The, the, actually, after I think about it, if you, you could potentially stain it. I've seen it done. We've done it on historical okay. projects. It doesn't impact the dew point uh, relative to the siding, so you get any break flaking off or anything. However, I'm going to side with um, with our management and actually go go forward. We we'll just clean it and see where it goes, and just move this amendment ahead and and then see if they come back. Okay. Or that that's the way I see it. Probably the best way. What about others? What do the others feel? You're muttering, so I'll give you the mic. No, I'm not muttering. Oh, okay. That's muttering. I mean, I'll say I don't mind the colors. I do have the concerns about painting the brick. I'm trying to look at Buff City soap, but I can't see it from the outside. <clears throat> But I'm interested in what others have to say about painting. Uh, I have a question for the project sponsor. Uh, I believe this is like going nationwide, right? This new color scheme? Correct. Do you get any pushback from any other city on this? <clears throat> Obviously, of course, I'm not the architect permitting that. We permit the civil. Uh, however, I do know because this in itself was a an accommodation to the local code. Uh, Planning Commission, that while partnering with the communities, we do we do give and take. So I'm sure the architect will will be pressured to rebrand, obviously, but also be willing to work with you as well about what is right for the community. That's just part of part of the so, game, right? So in answer to your question, I was just reading an article. There was pushback from a couple of communities about this, but. I should qualify that in that saying it was because Walmart did it without 
they were part of a PDD or special mm -hmm. use or whatever. Right. And colors were part of the original approval and Walmart went and changed them without getting approval. Well, this happens so, too, doesn't it? Yep. So, um, <laughs> so I would say there, there's been some pushback. I, I personally don't have a problem with the colors, but I, like I said, I don't, I'm not a fan of painted brick. Um, um, or block. Um, I don't know what the compromise is. I mean, there's a lot going on in those pictures of brown and the, the gray, and you're going to leave some of it brown. I, I don't know. Um, I guess I, 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 I guess I, I, I would go along with doing it, but. Uh, Kind of like what Commissioner Janowski said, we'll see what happens and you come back. <clears throat> Anybody else? Well, I'm, Anything? I'm fine with the parking spaces. That yeah. No big deal. We can definitely <laughs> agree on that. Thanks for tossing us a softball. No, we're just kidding. No. We're just saying we, we agree. We're good. Um, and the canopy, I think there's I don't have yeah. an issue there. So have you had... Patrick, have you had conversations with the arch architect to say? Uh, not yet, just generally um, our initial staff comment of not recommending painting something that was integrally colored. Um, and part of it is that there is a PDD with this project and it was part of the original PDD and the site plan that was approved. So when the Planning Commission Board approved it, they approved elevations based on that type of block. Um, so, but we haven't had any uh, response in terms of, you know, wanting to do an alternative or stain it or do something else. It was basically um, kind of an out of the box type of um, type of proposal where if it's split face block or anything except brick, it gets painted. So I would like to suggest that we um, approve the parking and the canopy and uh, ask that you continue to work on some possible options to get Walmart their right colors, but to not have something that's going to peel. I guess I, one thing I would so kind of like Walmart. These colors, so I, I'd like some explanation about that. Right, uh, maybe that wasn't the best way to explain that. Um, I guess my point was the the new brand is determined by corporate. It comes out and it's got these color schemes, and then the then their architects for each region have to uh, have to make that happen. How they do that, whether it's painting or staining or whatever, I don't know. I'm not the architect. I don't know what their process was. All I do know is he was saying that he prefers to to rebrand per the color scheme. Uh, and if we have to stay with the earth tones, it would probably affect the other paint, uh, what they do with the other part of the building. Keep it tan and browns or whatever. Uh, but I can't speak exactly for him on how he would, how he would achieve that rebranding. Um, or if the store just doesn't get the rebrand. Now they, they are rebranding is some, because it includes signage. You notice they, they got rid of the big Walmart across the front and it's that spark. So you're seeing that all <coughs> over the place now, the spark. The spark. spark. Yeah. Okay. So it's, it's mainly just the spark. So I don't know. It's, um, <laughs> Anybody else have anything? I don't like painting brick any, either, so I'm with the crowd. Yeah. Rebranding can look different and still do the same thing. Absolutely. And the architect is paid to make it look good. So. That's right. It, it's I'm it's good definitely that. the architect's job to, to decide how to make that happen. You're right. Yeah. Whether it's paint, stain, power wash, whatever. Thank you. All right. Do I have a motion? I think, well, I think we can pass the first part. I think and the parking and canopy. Yeah. I'll do the... I move to recommend approval of amendment number four to the Walmart PDD and planning application at 4555 Michigan Avenue on the subject parcels, and there's a bunch of them listed. 
Um, in, in, I want to make sure that our invisible lawyer is listening. Um, <laughs> the, including the approval of the 3.44 parking spaces per 1,000 square feet of building area subject to approval of the PDD agreement by Township Legal Counsel and staff prior to review by the Township Board. So then, Patrick, this next paragraph is the one that we want to say we don't want to approve that part until give you a chance to work with the architect on the branding colors, ways to do it. Yeah, and what I would uh, recommend here is um, um, approve the motion um, as written, except um, at the end um, where it states subject to a condition that integrally colored split face block or other masonry shall not be painted. Um, I would recommend um, that rather than subject to, to state um, and deferring a decision on any changes to this integrally colored split face block um, to a future meeting or something that doesn't necessarily close the case on that request, but to allow the applicant to come back with an alternative or an explanation based on the Planning Commission's discussion. So, um, so rather than subject to the condition that the integrally colored split face block or other masonry shall not be painted, it would be, um, and to defer a decision on the, on, on <coughs> painting of, of any block. So can I add one thing as far as your motion goes uh, regarding the parking, the parking part? Uh, Patrick did raise uh, in our conversations and tonight uh, the potential of those 35 spaces uh, being sold at some time as an out parcel, right behind the bank. Do you remember that conversation? We would love to have that kind of verbiage in the amendment uh, that, that would preclude us having to come back and doing another PD amendment uh, if it were written in somehow that maybe that ratio would allow that further 35 to be the minimum, if that's possible. So we would be we would be in to, favor of that for sure. I think you would need a PDD anyway, right? If you're uh, not, if it's already off. in this one. If it's a if it's a proposal for a new building, you'd be amending the PDD because right. you'd be building something on it. Yeah. If there's some reason to okay. use that property, then we would have to see what right. PDD. That's so. fine. Yeah. I guess okay. so. To continue the motion. Um, <clears throat> further, I move to approve the site plan amendment for bu building elevation changes in planning application number 132-DIR-8112 at 4555 Michigan, Ave oh, I think there was another five in there, yeah. Michigan yeah. Avenue subject nope. to deferring yes. the decision about the um, coloring, painting, the split block, block face. Split face block. <laughs> split face block. We need the architects to do this one. Um, or other masonry not painting it. And it's being a deferred decision about that. Uh, correct. To, to a future meeting to allow uh, the applicants to respond to the comments by the Planning Commission and staff. Okay. So we have a motion. Do we have support? Support. Okay, so we have a motion by Commissioner Eggenberger and support by Commissioner Watkins. Any further discussion? All right, Commissioner Eggenberger, could you call the vote, please? Yes, uh, Commissioner Eggenberger, yes. Commissioner Foster? Yes. Commissioner Janowski? Yes. Commissioner Lee? Yes. Commissioner Singh? Yes. Commissioner Watkins? Yes. Commissioner Weber? Yes. Chairperson Zuber? Yes. Thank you, motion carries. All right, so we sh probably will see the architect at some future meeting, I don't know. Or maybe we'll see you again, sir. Thank, Thank you for you. coming up to Michigan for us. All right, excellent. Uh, so we have a third item on, uh, for a public hearing. We have uh, item number 020-SLU-8048 and 020-DIR. Dash 8047, this is Faith Baptist Church Outdoor Pavilion. We're considering a special land use and site plan for parcel, uh, parcel number 020-99-0009-000, which is also known as 47500 Warren Road. 
Property is located at the northwest corner of Beck and Warren. Proposed use is a new construction of an outdoor pavilion. Patrick, tell us more. Please. Sure, thank you. Um, the Faith Baptist Church is a religious institution located at the northwest corner of Warren and Beck. And um, it's uh, located in the RR Rural Residential Zoning District. And this zoning district states that um, not only religious institutions are special land uses, but also accessory structures um, to special land uses are themselves uh, special land uses. So that's why we're here for a public hearing and a special land use for a pavilion because of how the ordinance is written. Um, the special land use was previously granted for the church itself a few years ago, and then uh, subsequently the church was built. Um, so now the, uh, uh, the applicants proposed to build a 36 foot wide uh, by, 40, by 50 foot pavilion uh, located just north of the church um, in uh, some of the open space areas north, north of the church, basically for outdoor events and activities. Um, our uh, staff recommendation is uh, approval of the pavilion. Um, our recommendation um, is subject to uh, three conditions. The first is uh, revising the plans in accordance with the comments in our staff report prior to the township board review of the applications. Um, some of those are minor things, just um, um, noting the uh, area of the pavilion. Some of the lines are pretty faint. Um, so just making sure that's clear and some other minor site elements just to make the plans clear. Um, our second recommended condition is construction of a sidewalk between the pavilion and the sidewalk to the east. And the third uh, condition is compliance with all state, county, and township requirements. Um, in our letter, we also include an analysis of the special land use. One of the criteria of the special land use is um, that the site has to meet the noise standards of section 7.02A of the zoning ordinance. Um, I'm not saying it does or doesn't, that's just a general noise standard that's in the ordinance. So if there are outdoor activities and events, um, that's fine, many religious institutions have them, uh, but there's a general noise ordinance standard um, in the zoning ordinance that um, has to apply, not just for this site, but for all sites. So that's just a, something that we add there just in case um, there's an event, if the noise exceeds that, it doesn't really become a special land use issue, it becomes a zoning compliance issue with ordinance enforcement. Um, so that concludes our uh, uh, staff report and we'll be happy to take any questions. Thank you, Patrick. Um, is the project sponsor here? Uh, Okay, could you please go to the podium? Could you please wait, ma'am? Um, could you please go to the podium and, um, yes, please open the public hearing. I move to open the public hearing. Support. All right, we have a motion and uh, by Commissioner Weber and support by Commissioner Watkins to open the public hearing. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, thank you. Could you please introduce yourself? And yes, I'm uh, Reverend Barry Bedwell, pastor of the church there. Uh, at uh, Beck and Warren Faith Baptist Church. And uh, we're just uh, wanting to put up an open pavilion to have <laughs> like our church picnic there and a few things like that. It's not gonna be used that much. It would be just for our church. It's not gonna be rented out to anybody. And we just, it's gonna be a, a slab with, uh, with a roof over it opened <clears> up <throat> where we can meet underneath there. Uh, for the last few years, we've rented tents to meet out there and have picnics, so we thought it'd be good to have a covered pavilion. Okay, thank you. Basically it. Yeah. Okay. Most of the time, it probably won't be used. Um, you know, maybe in the summer, in the fall a little bit, but uh, most of the time, it's probably not going to be used that much. Okay, thank you. Um, anybody from the public want to address this project? Well, my name is Holly Capelli, and I um, butt up to your neighborhood, so which is, you know, great. You've been great neighbors. We've loved having you. Um, Could you please? I just it? wonder about the maintenance, is because, <coughs> and 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 I don't. May, this could be my ignorance that I don't know. The <coughs> previous owners, when it was a vacant land, they would they would cut. 
I don't know, every other month or whatever, the whole piece of property. And currently the whole piece of property doesn't get cut all the way down. And I, I know that the retention ponds restrict a little bit of that and, you know, play into, but I just, because of the not cutting, because of a couple of trees that were planted that have not been replaced, and I just had questions about lighting and maintenance, and um, I don't think you're gonna be that noisy, so I, I'm not really worried about you're having a Christian music concert out there, which wouldn't bother me, but you know, um, that those are my concerns. Just being someone that directly butts up to the the property. But we have enjoyed having you as our neighbors. So. Ms. Capelli, could you Thank please you. tell us your address for the record? I'm part of me. Could you please uh, give us your address for as the record? Our address is seven three nine six Stonebrook. So we're we actually butt up to your very, 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 very end. Oh, okay. Um, <coughs> yeah, we're, what, we're in this. Got it. Okay, thank um, you. Well, like I said previously, the that whole area would get cut. You know, not, I mean, it would get long, but they would cut every other month or, you know, whatever. And now it just seems like it's all overgrown and I don't know if that's for, again, my ignorance for the fact that it needs to be overgrown or that it, it, that's because of the retention ponds or, or whatever. So that's my only concern is that, that we maintain the property, that the, the dead trees that are, are taken care of, and if we put the pavilion in, which you know sounds like a great idea to me, um, the, the maintenance of it, you know, and I know I know you guys work really hard. I see you guys out there cutting the grass and we enjoyed your Christmas lights and trunk or treat and all of the, those things that you do are so positive for the community. So I feel kind of petty, you know, bringing this up, but at the same time, you know, that's what we back up to. And, you know, in the past we've been able to kind of enjoy that land a little bit, and maybe it's not our land to enjoy anymore, but uh, anyways, thank you, thank thank you for you. listening thank you. to me. Thank you. Anyone else from the public want to address this project, sir? Yeah. Yeah, it's really hard to see. Yeah, definitely. Um, let me pull up the plans here. <clears throat> It's a ghost. Yeah, it's a kind of faint gray lines here. The um, there's there have since been revised plans that have been uh, submitted that more clearly show um, the a more bold outline. So um, this is the north side. So north is going left, and so this is the north side of the church. So this will be several feet north of the church. Um, this this area here, this line that goes through, that's a, a grass paver area. So if they ever had to get a fire truck there, the fire truck would go down this paver area. So the, um, they can't move the pavilion closer to the building because they have to maintain this uh, for uh, fire access. And then the pavilion is, uh, is uh, south of, this is their pond area farther north. Um, okay. Thank you. Sir, could you please tell us who you are and where, what your address is for the record? My name's Jack Brisbane. I live on Ashley Court, which is the street across from uh, Beck Road. It's in front of okay. the uh, church. It's a very quick question. Now, on the pavilion, it's designed in that. Do you know if they're going to use any type of overhead lighting? And if you do have some overhead lighting, will that be shielded out towards the ground? That's that's basically my question. Was on that lighting issue. Okay. That the lighting would be shield would be shielded and then facing ground and that. Thank you. Okay. 
Yeah, we uh, we did ask the applicant in a previous plan revision um, of what the if they have electrical plan, lighting plan, cut cut um, cut sheets of the light fixtures, and they replied saying that there was no lighting proposed on the pavilion. Oh, doesn't matter then. Thank you Thank very you. much. Then. Thank you. Anyone else? Do I hear a motion to close the public hearing? Well, I think Patrick wasn't there. An email we got. Yeah. But that's, yeah, um, there's an, an email that we received that, um, that uh, from the people who live at 7375 North Beck and own, well, they own that house and 7415 North Beck. And um, they have pointed out that um, there's some lack of vegetation between their property and the church. And also that the church leaves the, um, the dumpster enclosure open and they can see right into it from their property and it's and it's problematic for them they also complain about some noise that they can't enjoy their outdoor space on sundays um, if there's outdoor events um. Um, so some of these um, if it's the a matter of the dumpster gates being opened um, that, that's, uh, that can be a, an ordinance enforcement matter where um, that's something that the, the owner or the owners or operators can be more vigilant about keeping the gates closed or if it becomes a recurring issue, um, we can have ordinance um, officers just stop by and um, just remind the um, owners and operators to keep the, um, the dumpster gates closed. And that's something that they frequently do around the community. Um, if it's a noise, if something related to the noise, that's also an ordinance-related complaint. If it's if it's too noisy or the frequency or um, events or the time of day, things like that. Um, sometimes, depending on neighboring properties and the line of sight, sometimes if it's between vegetation or vegetation has died, um, that's something we can look at. If um, there are supposed to be trees, but the trees have died, we can have uh, our ordinance officers look at that and inspect it and then uh, follow up with any landscaping that has to be replaced. Yeah, the one other thing I didn't read was that they uh, they said that they have headlights in their bedroom window early Sunday mornings. Church. Um, well, that may be possible if, if there are vehicles parked yeah. along the northeast and they go to pull in. There, there looks like there's some vegetation there, but if it's more deciduous, you know, this time of year, it could go through. Mm -hmm. um, and we could refer, we could refer back to the original landscape plans to see if anything was proposed there. Sometimes, um, if if it's nothing was proposed there, and this was supposed to be preserved as it was, sometimes the upside is we get preservation of mature vegetation. But sometimes the downside is if it's deciduous, it's hard to take something out just to replant something evergreen. So we can look at the plan to see what was approved for that area. Yeah. Okay. Good. This homeowner requests a berm <laughs> separating their yard from the, the church property but and they did enclose a photo of the dumpster uh, with the, the gates open and it looks like snow piled up in front of it so they can't even be closed but it's hard to tell yeah <clears throat> what well, no, I think it, if we're not, if we're seeing issues with property maintenance, then we're adding something to the property. I think it's totally relevant. And to neighbors. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm concerned about aesthetics. Um, I, I looked at the drawings and was underwhelmed. Um, it's like, it looks like the cheapest picnic shelter I've ever seen in a state park, so. It's really boring, yeah. I would like to see something a little bit more um, permanent looking, I guess, and, and um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, something a little more than a lean-to. Um, to me, this is a, an oppor a missed opportunity. And I saw I saw it was stamped by an engineer, but I'm curious about it flying away. But anyway, that's All 
Pardon? Um, there's really nothing in the ordinance that uh, regulates the appearance of accessory structures. If it was a wall, it would have to be brick, but nothing about you know the appearance itself. So that's something where you know it's good to defer to the planning commission because there's always good feedback on opinions. Like that. <laughs> I I will say it looks similar to the pavilion that is at, and I want to say is it Life Church. At Haggerty and Warren, that was built as a Boy Scout project. Mm -hmm. Doesn't it have a nice green roof? I don't remember. Well, our public hearing. Yeah, we did close the public hearing. Who are you? Oh, okay. Was there, was there a motion to close the public hearing? I'm going back through my notes here. I thought so. I supported it. I yeah. thought, yeah, I thought Commissioner yeah, Weber we we and Commissioner Watkins supported, yeah. I know that was the motion to open for Commissioner Weber and supported by Watkins to open. I didn't have anything in my notes to close it. So close it. Okay. Maybe, um, sir, go up to the mic and tell us who you are. Give us your address. <laughs> yeah. Get it. And we'll Thank close the public all. hearing after this. <laughs> my name is James Dotson. I live in uh, 31005 Elmwood, Garden City. Um, just like you say, pictures speak a thousand words. It, it doesn't look like much on that drawing, but it's, it's, a, it's a, a steel roof with regular beams, just like, you know, like six by six post, um, spaced out accordingly to the engineering um, development. Um, it, is, it is not a, it's just a shelter. It's, it's a pavilion. It's not walls or anything like that. No lights are gonna be on it. Um, but that's just basically what it is. Just a, it's just like we, every year we rent a tent. We put a big tent up there and then they put the post out there. We have our picnics and then they take it back down. <coughs> So we're just trying to find a permanent structure <coughs> that our older people can walk, like you know, on the cement, have you know, said walk on the grass and stuff like that. That's the main proposal. So but that's all I, you know, I just want to say that it, it does, you know, it's it goes along with the engineering, the the height, the the width, and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. I guess to see a picture is better than the drawing for sure. Yeah, you, there's a rendering in here that's I don't know, Patrick, if you can pull that up the. The three D drawing. It's page three twenty five. If you need that. So I just okay. googled pole barn drawing. As one does. As one does. <laughs> and this, this is pretty. The drawing that's pretty, included is pretty basic. And this it, looks pretty basic. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, that's, I mean, that's a pole barn type. We they didn't want sides and stuff like that. We wanted an open pavilion. Mm -hmm. This one doesn't have any sides. Right. Oh, from here I can't tell that. So, sorry. It's going to be a steel roof. And it's a steel roof. No, the trusses will be the trusses inside will be wood, but the the, the roof itself will be that that that's the steel roof, not up not like a pole barn roof with you know, I don't believe it's gonna be that with the screws and stuff. It's just like the overlapping, up, not you know, hard to roof. make it look nice. Some diverted Sorry, use the mic. So. Oh. Oh, no, I was not Super quickly, Madam Chair, I, you know I'm taking a look at everything that we have in our parks, Freedom Park, Heritage Park. I mean it's. It's fairly standard. It's I think for, for what it's going to be used for, I, I don't I don't see a problem with what what we see here. Um, I looked at Freedom Park. It's pretty unimpressive. It's very utilitarian, and I think it serves a purpose. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have any questions about this particular development. Okay. Okay.
Yeah. <laughs> Second. All right, we have a motion to close the public hearing by Commissioner Weber and support by Commissioner Watkins. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Aye. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm gonna, I still feel like it could be a little bit nicer looking. In, uh, pushed on other things in the past to make them a little bit more attractive for the community, but I see what you mean about a picnic shelter, but. Okay. This is about as utilitarian as we can get. <clears throat> I move to recommend approval of the special land use and site plan amendment at 47500 Warren Road, parcel 020-99-0009-000, or zero as we would call it, for a pavilion as illustrated on the special land use plans and site plan for the reasons stated in the above analysis subject to the following conditions. Revising the plans in accordance with the comments in the planning Division staff report prior to the Township Board review of the applications. Two, construction of a sidewalk between the pavilion and the sidewalk to the east. Three, compliance with all state, county, and township requirements. Support. support. All right, we have a motion by Commissioner Eggenberger and support by Commissioner Foster. Um, Commissioner Eggenberger, would you please, oh, further discussion, is there any further discussion? Commissioner Eggenberger, would you please call the vote? Sure, Commissioner Eggenberger, yes. Commissioner Foster? Yes. Commissioner Janowski? Yes. Commissioner Lee? Yes. Commissioner Singh? Yes. Commissioner Watkins? Yes. Commissioner Weber? Yes. Uh, Chairperson Zuber? No. Okay. All right, motion carries. Thank you very much. Good luck. Uh, yes, we'll follow up with those. And then the next step will be this application will proceed to the Township Board since it's a special land use. So um, that'll be probably the March 12th Township Board meeting, but we'll follow up with the applicants on that. Thank you. All right, we have another item. We have the Zoning Ordinance Text Amendment, Fences, Walls, and Borders. We need to set a public <laughs> hearing for that. And excuse me, could I ask you to take your conversation out? Since we have, we still have a meet. Excuse me. Excuse this. Excuse me. Excuse me. This is still a meeting that we're having here. Could you please take your conversation outside? Thank you. Okay. Excellent. Um, we have, uh, like I said, we have the uh, next item is the zoning ordinance text amendment. And Patrick, are you, is that yours or Aaron's? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll handle that one. Um, we previously looked at the fence ordinance at a number of meetings and at our, at our last work session, I think we were in general agreement to go ahead with um, the amendment as it was proposed that evening. The only thing that we have left to do is to have our consultant professionally draw the graphics. Uh, but in the meantime, what we'd like to do is set the public hearing and then um, at a future meeting when the public hearing takes place, we can present uh, the ordinance that we've reviewed as well as the graphics. And then um, at that time, um, the Planning Commission can make a recommendation to the Township Board or we can defer action if we think we need more time to go through the ordinance. So um, tonight would just be to set the public hearing and we'll get the notices going if that's uh, what's adopted. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Support. All right, we have a motion by Commissioner uh, Weber and support by Commissioner Foster. Um, any further discussion? All right, Commissioner Eggenberger, could you call the vote, please? Sure, Commissioner Eggenberger, yes. Commissioner Foster? Yes. Commissioner Janowski? Yes. Commissioner Lee? Yes. Commissioner Singh? Yes. Commissioner Watkins? Yes. Commissioner Weber? Yes. And Chairperson Zuber? Yes. Thank you. All right, we have got some more business to do. Um, we have item number five is the master plan. And uh, we have a memo in here for that. So Patrick and Aaron, please, please tell us all about what you got. Uh, thank you all. Um, so uh, at, your, at your seats this evening, I have included 
the uh, current adopted future land use map as well as the uh, second iteration of a draft future land use map that we've been looking at. Um, and the areas of focus tonight are going to be uh, an update on the color classification and Michigan Avenue. So um, just as we normally do the master can, uh, Canton master plan process, we are currently on um, step five, six, where we um, go through and draft some document maps, conceptual designs, and then we review some draft uh, materials. So just for a recap, the future land use map is the community's vision guide for future planning. It envisions the intended development types, patterns, intensities for future development. It is the basis for the zoning map and it's aspirational in nature. It's not uh, legally binding. As I noted, tonight we're gonna talk about the updated color classification and uh, focus on Michigan Avenue. So as we discussed at our meeting last, um, at, during the workshop, um, we had talked about expanding some classifications and I had noted that we were going to be um, making some changes to the color classification in order to be more in line with um, adjacent communities and, and best practices. So um, if you look at either the, the printout that I have here or on the screen, um, the legend for the future land use map on the left is what's currently been adopted and the one on the right is what we're proposing and we're, what we're going through our discussion. So um, highlighted and outlined in yellow is the residential classifications where we have rural residential um, in a green, then starts in a, a yellow, goes to orange, and then ends in a high density, which is kind of a, a, a brownish color. Um, so to be in more in line with our adjacent communities and, and how uh, other future land use maps go, um, we are proposing to move all of the residential classifications, start with a very pale yellow and move to a darker orange. So it removes the, the red classification or the red coloring from the residential classifications altogether. This is just a couple of examples just to highlight what we're, what we're doing here so you can see it better on the, the, the draft maps. Uh, sorry, you're yeah. going from what's on the left to what's going on the right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. And this is just to highlight the ones that were, were changed. Just a couple of examples here. I'm not going to go through each and every one. I mean, as you can see, the legend on the left is um, has far fewer classifications than the one on the right. Um, some of which we talked about last last time, where we're expanding the community facilities classification to include schools, parks, golf courses, township. Uh, buildings, um, and then creating the classification for the manufactured housing. So there's gonna be a lot more on the right-hand side in the draft future land use map than what we currently have. And this is just highlighting the local shopping um, and the commercial. So as we discussed last time, currently in our future land use map, it's called local shopping, community shopping, general commercial. And it's a, a light blue, a darker blue, and then a very dark blue. And why it's not, they're not all grouped together in the legend, I have absolutely no idea. So we're gonna fix that too. <laughs> but on the right hand side, you'll see that we go to, um, we're, we're not changing how we're, how we're grouping them, we're just kind of changing how we're calling them. So it'll be local commercial, community commercial, general commercial. So we're eliminating the shopping component from it and just, just focusing on the commercial but those will be focused uh, and classified using a red color palette. So lighter red, darker red, and then a dark red. I'm not going through all of them that we're changing, I just wanted to highlight what we are changing so you can see from one map to another kind of what you're looking at. All right, now to the big heavy hitter, Michigan Avenue. <laughs> it looks okay. like that. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Is it, is it gonna look like that? <laughs> yes, I was gonna is. say, that's pretty fancy. <laughs> Aspirational in nature, right? <laughs> um, so Michigan Avenue, um, one of the big projects that Canton is focusing on and what we're incorporating into our master plan is the main project, Michigan Avenue Innovation Network, okay? So this is intended to cultivate Michigan Avenue as a technology corridor um, all the way from Detroit to Ann Arbor. And part of that is going to be um, partnering with adjacent communities. So working with the city of Wayne, Westland, Ypsilanti, Easter, <coughs> Dearborn, and all of the communities along there. Because it's Canton, we don't have, I mean, Michigan Avenue runs through our, our community for sure, 
but it's not ours, right? And the way to make sure that the corridor in and of it itself continues to be uh, a hub for uh, destinations and to really build out the character along those communities, we need to have buy-in from, from other communities as well. So while we want to move forward, we want it to bolster and we all want to work together so that not also that, that the burden of um, moving Michigan Avenue forward is not solely the responsibility of Canton. We can all do it together. It's not solely on us. So as I mentioned, corridor partners, Canton Van Buren, Westland Wayne, blah, blah. And then we looked at some potential projects. So really these things are, these ideas are focusing on technology, research, being um, innovative hubs uh, along, along the corridor. So how are we going to do that? Um, right now, Canton and a lot of the adjacent communities are partnering and working with um, OHM, uh, an engineering firm, and Fourth Economy to do a preliminary assessment on the communities. <coughs> They're going to look at the demographics, the market trends, the analysis, workforce dynamics, and see what the communities need to become the thriving research corridor that we're envisioning. Uh, there will be community site visits that will be taking place where um, consultants from Fourth Economy will come to each community and visit <coughs> with, uh, with the administration and see what are the existing conditions and what can move forward. A steering committee is going to be uh, comprised of representatives from, from the communities, and this will provide Fourth Economy some guidance on what we feel or what, what the uh, partnering communities want to move forward. And from there, they'll create the main corridor vision. Now, moving forward with this, we want to make sure that this is incorporated into our master plan. We want to make sure that these projects work together and so that the, the ideas that go forth can be supported by each other and they're not in any kind of conflict. <coughs> So to foster that and to make sure that we've, we, we are in line with um, moving Michigan Avenue forward into this innovation area, um, we're proposing on the future land use map to create this innovation network boundary. And so it has the, the ideas and some of the verbiage of the main, the Michigan Avenue Innovation Network, um, but it's not solely limited to, to that. So in case, uh, Maine in and of itself doesn't uh, mature the way it is originally intended right now in case it goes off into um, kind of morphs and, and does, it, does something a little bit different. We still have this, this idea preserved in the master plan. So the green outline boundary there is the innovation network boundary. And so that includes uh, north parcels on Michigan Avenue. It goes up Haggerty just a little bit where we have a lot of industrial properties. Um, extends west. It does not include the, you'll see a couple of the purple, let's see, can you see my, mm -mm. no, you can't see my cursor. Um, so we did not include the Redwood residential development that's there on uh, Michigan Avenue, just west of the ITC corridor, but we did include the commercial properties that are fronting on Michigan Avenue, okay? And then it continues to the west, all the way down, and then it uh, aligns to the border uh, between Canton and Van Buren, and then Canton and our eastern par partner. So this innovation boundary area gives us an opportunity to really focus on this area being the hub for the research, the innovation, the technology, and, and those, those types of businesses that uh, Canton is trying to target through the main project. Before I move forward, do, are there any questions related to that? Excellent. Okay. So in addition to having the, the innovation boundary, we wanted to look at some of these areas, and we, we called these some specialty planning sites. Now, um, I'm going to call out a couple of these in a minute. So the idea is that we really wanted to look at outside of just creating this innovation boundary, which is great. It's wonderful, and we really hope it all the properties along Michigan Avenue uh, mature in this way. We're looking at some specialty sites and seeing if there's ways that we can partner with um, some pro private property owners or some of these are, are properties that are owned by the township itself and what, what ways can we move forward and try to implement those innovative uh, planning techniques that we want to see along Michigan Avenue. So the first one here, specialty site number one, this is Research Drive. And this may look familiar to you um, 
on the Planning Commission, the, wish you could see my cursor, the, the property on the northeast corner there, that's the uh, mini warehouse depot that was approved by the Planning Commission, and on the uh, northwest <coughs> side is uh, the discount tire that's been discussed here before. So there are um, some vacant properties along Research Drive, including one property to the south on the east side that's owned by Canton Township. So the idea here is to look at some of these properties here and see with a Canton Township owned property and then a couple of the vacant properties and then there's a, uh, a research park that has some spec buildings that, um, that have been approved and seeing if there's ways that Canton can partner with those private property owners and kind of cultivate this research park into being uh, a research, um, research area. Any questions on this specialty site? Okay. Number two. This is the Dye Property subdivision, or Dye Brothers subdivision, I apologize. And it's a lot, it's a platted subdivision. A um, lot of little vacant properties in there, um, and the township owns quite a few of them. I meant to get a total, and I didn't. I don't have a total, but um, the township does own quite a few of those, those small properties there. So the idea being, if Canton has put together or owns a lot of these small properties, there's opportunities for um, developing this area, maybe for um, a research park, for uh, business areas, or maybe some uh, housing elements for the workers in that area to, to live. So this is an, an area that um, the township has been interested in purchasing properties. Now is an opportunity to look at it in more depth and say, what do we want to have there? What could, what could really um, go on these sites that could foster the innovation and the research and the technology, as I keep saying, um, for this corridor to make Maine a success? Any questions with this? I'll move on to number three. <coughs> Excuse me. Number three is on Michigan Avenue, just west of Lilly, and it bisects um, Michigan Avenue. So we have a couple properties to the south and then some properties to the north. Now the properties to the south, except for one small parcel on the west side, um, those are owned by Canton Township. Uh, so th there's an opportunity there with this already being Canton Township owned property of something being, being developed there. Um, there's also a research park on the north side that has um, one or two buildings there. Oh no, I'm sorry, they don't have any buildings there. Um, but the developer has been interested in potentially developing those to this uh, green area in the middle. And so there might be an opportunity there to partner with that developer and see if there's something that can be done in a um, public-private partnership. Any questions there? Number four is the landfill. So this is something that, uh, this is a property that's come up quite a bit during our public engagement and a lot of people were interested, what's gonna happen there? Um, it's getting near the end of its lifespan, as I understand, so what, what happens next to it? So by including this as a specialty site in our master plan, um, it also gives us the opportunity to look at it in more depth, create a specialty plan after the master plan is over and really look at it and say, what do we want to have there? What could feasibly be done? What are the community benefits to, to having this landfill um, having a life outside of, of its current use? Um, the ideas that come forth will be done in a, sep in a specialty plan after the master plan is over because it'll take too, too long for us to study that in depth as part of the master plan and you know, at some point we have to be done with, with one part of it so we can start implementing it. Um, but the idea of including it here is that if there's grant opportunities or public-private partnerships, we've already identified it in our master plan as something we want to study, and so it gives us a springboard to go after some uh, potential grant funding in the future. Anything with number four? Right along. Uh, number five is our last uh, specialty site that we've identified for the master plan. It's on the east side of uh, 275, and we wanted to make sure that we included something on the east side of 275 because during our public engagement sessions, we heard from a lot of people that um, 
there were a lot of people that felt that the east side doesn't get as much attention as anything west of 275. So when we do a lot of these planning things, our conceptual designs, the neighborhood nodes, we wanted to make sure that we incorporated something east of 275. Um, so a lot of these properties here on the east side and lots are vacant. Um, so it's an opportunity to look at something on the east side. It's right off of the Michigan uh, 275 interchange. What's something that could potentially um, go in that area. Um, now, a lot of these properties are owned by different different people. Canton Township doesn't have any any <coughs> properties over in this area, um, but it's something that gives us an opportunity to work with those property owners and see if they have any any ideas of what they would want for potential development there. So, um, this is what we identified for for the east side. Are there any questions? That's kind of the meat of the of the discussion tonight. So are there any questions, comments, anything you'd like to go over? Yes. Yeah, of course. Um, you know, you kind of alluded to it on, on page five, the link up between De Detroit and Ann Arbor mm -hmm. and including Willow Run. This is a corridor that could be something. Um, you'd like starting at identifying areas but it sounds like you got to do something overall to see how this all strings together. Mm -hmm. If you don't do that, you might be duplicating things. And when it could be a, a really an organism that you can build and try to link all this together at some point. Um, I'm only thinking that maybe you need to, um, you know, it's naming and, but it's sort of like if you can get, get an agreement through all these communities that this is going to be a, uh, I don't know the name of it. Let me put it that way. I'm just thinking out loud. You need some creative minds to think about this and identify routes or parcels along the whole stretch. Is it land? Is it movement? You know what I mean? Like transportation, is that the link? What is it that pulls all this together so that it works as an organism for this region? Because we, I mean, they talked about transit to Ann Arbor was the only one that's feasible that anyone wanted to do. <coughs> now Oakland's buying in now. So, you know, this could be something that could be a springboard to kind of open up transportation in all these areas. Um, and why are we linking them? That's the other thing. What are, you, what are you ultimately trying to achieve? And I don't know what that looks like. That's too far ahead of me. But I'm just thinking, that's how you got to get these minds together and kind of work it out. A charrette, whatever. Yeah, and, and that's where, this is where we're starting. So the adjacent communities with working with Fourth Economy are looking at all of the um, the the assets and also the impediments of, of the area and how can things work together, as you say, to be one cohesive area because it, it won't serve the whole corridor well if Canton does one thing, Westland does something else, and, and then it, it seems like we're fighting <clears throat> each other. So right. to have this be a cohesive um, hub, the, the intent is for us all to work together and partner and see what, what the corridor has in terms of infrastructure, temp, uh, transportation, um, and, and start going from there and start building out the vision document after, after that, that assessment's done. Well, the, the reason I mentioned is you're dealing with just the master plan. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that goes in the master plan. Is that your thinking it does or what? We're starting. We're including this in the master plan and say this is what we're what we're intending so to do. But Maine is going to be its own separate visioning document. But they have to work together, otherwise, there there nothing will be able to move forward. It sounds like kind of like you're, you're you're thinking along the idea of, a, of an authority amongst all these communities to develop to develop this corridor. Um, which I think would have to happen to uh, to attract resources. And when I guess when I'm talking about resources, I guess I'm talking about financially and economically mostly. Because you know the, the truth of the matter is, all these communities along here, Canton is probably the most well off of of all of them, except maybe Dearborn if you count Dearborn. But um, you know, in order to have a level playing field and make sure everyone's rowing in the same direction, there, there would probably have to be a, a, a single entity that that kind of fosters and develops this this corridor. However, there are there are aspects of each community you're going to have to be responsible for on their own. D 
developing Michigan Avenue as far from a zoning perspective and that sort of thing about what we want to see and that is our responsibility. Mm -hmm. Each community needs to address that accordingly in their, their master plan documents as well. So I guess in, in a way, um, the communities need to be thinking along the same lines as they develop their master plans as well. Anybody else have anything? Okay. Thank so, you, Aaron. All right. So then the draft future land use map is is moving along. That's good. <clears throat> okay. Um, it will be, um, so in the end of the month, we're having two open houses. Uh, one is going to be at the summit. The other one is going to be at the admin building here, um, 2 p.m. to 7 p.m., both open houses are identical. So all of the display materials, all the, the information is gonna be exactly the same. It, the, having two dates just gives people ample opportunity to attend if, if there's conflicts on either date. Um, the future land use map will be on display. So if there's anything else that the commission wants to, to think about or talk about <coughs> prior to that, otherwise the draft future land use map that you saw this evening will be the one that goes for some additional public comment. Um, and then after the uh, open houses, we'll bring all that back to you and we'll uh, discuss in more detail. Okay? okay. Thank you. Thank you. So we have an item number six. They're different in the packet versus on the agenda, but item number six, annual report and 2024 work plan. Uh, yes, um, the Planning Enabling Act um, state law requires the Planning Commission to uh, have an annual report each year that it gives to the legislative body. So um, we've prepared in the packet for this evening um, the proposed 2023 annual report from last year, as well as the 2024 work plan. Um, so if it's acceptable, um, we would recommend, um, we didn't write out a motion, I don't think, but we'd recommend a motion to um, recommend approval of the 2023 annual report and 2024 work plan to the Board of Trustees. Anybody? Motion? Support. Okay, we have a motion to approve the work plan and report by Commissioner Janowski and support by Commissioner Eggenberger. Commissioner Eggenberger, could you please call the vote? Sure. Uh, Commissioner Eggenberger, yes. Commissioner Foster, yes. Commissioner Janowski, yes. Commissioner <clears throat> Lee, yes. Commissioner Singh, yes. Commissioner Watkins, yes. Commissioner Weber, yes. Chairperson Zuber, yes. And uh, thank you very much. And we already did the election of officers, but I did want to bring up one other thing I forgot to mention at the beginning of the meeting. Um, you and I have talked briefly, Patrick, about p potentially scheduling these meetings an hour earlier. Yeah. Um, is there... You won't. I have a hard time getting here inside. Okay. 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 I'm just thinking of how late it is right now. How tired I am. <laughs> but anyway. Okay. Um, very good. So now we have public comment. Anyone from the public would like to speak? Please go to the podium. Tell us who you are. Give us your address. Okay. Um, sure. Okay. Thank you. My name is Richard Peters. Uh, I live at 3917 Colfax Court in Grandview Estates. And I'm speaking on behalf of a number of our residents. There's two issues I'd like to talk about. They actually are, 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 are complement or each, each item. Um, one of the major things we've had is flooding, which is inherent problem throughout Canton. Uh, we had a serious flood in our development in spring of uh, 2021. Uh, we were told that's a once in a 500 year event. Uh, in August of 2023, again, we had a, a, a significant flood. Number of our residents have six, seven feet of water in their basements. They've been flooded out twice within two years. And then again, in January of this year, 
uh, we had another flood. No. Uh, to my knowledge, none of the homes were affected, but Getty's Road, which is a main east-west highway serving the University of Michigan Medical Center, uh, St. Joe Hospital, uh, that was totally blocked. It looked like a major river. Uh, we've been working with uh, Canton Engineering. They've been out there several times. Um, so we have an issue with that. And the other part of that is the, it's called Creek View Landing Development for 449 homes that are going to be proposed to be built uh, north of Gettys. Um, that's only going to contribute to the problem, all the runoff, the roofs, sidewalks, roads. Um, it's, it's only going to make the, pro the uh, situation worse. Um, earlier, the first project that was approved, or not approved, but considered, um, caught my attention a little bit because of the floodplain area. And I think it's been compromised so many times. FEMA, if you look at that area, in our development borders on Gettys to the north and Denton to the east, and there's going to be roughly in the three phases maybe 500 homes in there. Uh, pretty significant. Uh, Fowler Creek, which is north of that proposed development, um, FEMA has maps that indicate that's a rated a A, which is the highest frequency for flooding, and to our west, Fowler Creek is also rated as an A rating. This last flooding event we had in January, uh, the Rouge River downstream was flooding. The upper Rouge River behind Cherry Hill Village and area, that was flooding. Uh, so that continues to be a real issue. Looking at Getty's Road from about Denton West, the area of the land that they're proposing, and I'm just eyeballing it. Canton, apparently, Township does not have any uh, topographical maps, so it's your guesses as well as any of us. So we really, we're kind of flying in the dark in that regard. I'm I, eyeballing, I'm thinking it's about six to eight feet above Gettys at that point, 50 to 100 feet from that down to Gettys is quite a drop. There's not proper drainage along that whole stretch. Uh, you, can, you can look at Gettys all the way from Denton past Barr. Um, it's hit and miss at best. Either there's no drain or if there is, then it'll come up to another piece of land that, you know, with this elevation like it is, it just drains on the Gettys. There's not adequate place for the water to go. Um, <clears throat> by the time you get down to Bar Road, which is a dirt road, that elevation drops down to where it's almost the same height as Gettys Road. So that's also where we have a large amount of water entering our development. Both the manager of Canton Township Engineering Department and one of his other engineers said, our problem is not the discharge of water from our development. The problem is the water entering our development from the various roads, mainly Gettys and Barr. And that's a real that's an issue as far as we're concerned with Wayne County. That's their responsibility. I'm not, I'm not faulting, you know, Canton Township. Uh, your hands are somewhat tied as well. But I do think Canton Township has the responsibility to approve or not approve various developments. And what I'm asking and, and other people in our development is that that development is not approved until Wayne County develops the proper infrastructure to handle the water issues throughout Canton Township. Uh, it's just not fair to the residents of that development. I mean, I had a lady in our home <coughs> Excuse crying me, sir. because it was the second time in two years that she had gotten six feet of water in her basement. 
We've given you five minutes to speak and that's the limit. So we hear what you're saying. Thank you. Okay. I mean, we gave you five minutes because you're representing more than one party. So thank you. Anyone else? You made a lot of comments. <laughs> Could you please go back to the mic? Yeah, you can go back to it. Could you please go back to the, the microphone? I apologize to people from our development, I won't do it again, to come here and sit for three hours and then not given proper uh, time to, to represent. I went to engineering and asked, is this a venue that <clears throat> would be appropriate for this discussion? They said, absolutely. So I would <clears throat> like to have some consideration of future, either make a time allotment or something like that, where we can discuss something like this. Uh, that transparency was one issue I wanted to talk about as well. And there's only been one public discussion on that, and that was in September of 2022. So I don't think it's fair to the residents in that development or surrounding residents. Thank you. Yeah. Can meet with Patrick any time, right? I did not know. Okay. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Mr. McCausland? I know it's late. I'll make it quick. Thank but you. I think you're going to find that as the community gets built out, these meetings are going to become more and more difficult because they're going to go longer and longer because they're not as easy as just having the big open spaces. So for example, like the Walmart repainting, because you know, a brown Walmart is prominent, was in the prominent communities. So they went to the extra mile to make them brown. So now we're gonna change them to blue. So there's gonna be a lot of tough decisions as the community builds out. But again, I'm just gonna say that I, I found it shocking tonight that now in my zone, we're, we're we're, we're thank you, Mr. Watkins, for noticing about the traffic over there, that the problematics with traffic and the drainage and the sewage, just because we're getting top golf doesn't make that go away. No, I know. I, I'm not blaming you. I'm saying I'm thanking you. I'm thanking you as a commission because I see that you're concerned. It's 10 o'clock at night and you're still sitting here. I thank you for that because in commissions past, we would have been long gone by now. And we would have said, hey, talk to engineering or talk to planning or talk to anything else. You are a group of concerned people. And I, it's the first time that I've seen this in a long time. So I think it's a great thing. You know, and I'm not, I'm not trying to badger you in any way. I'm trying to say thank you. Thank you. And, and realize that we, ha we are struggling, not only there, but in other places of this community. And I think it's going to take a group effort for us to get over these hurdles. And, it, you know, it does start in this room. And it continues on from there. But, you know, thanks for all the support. I, I do appreciate it. And, and thanks for noticing that there are problems just because there's a development. Does it In the years past, we just said, woohoo, let's take it. Now we look at it a little bit differently. And that's because of the makeup that you have going on there. So thank you again. Thank you. As somebody who's been on this board for quite a long time, I don't know that I agree with you that this is a totally different thought process, but I appreciate that. So, I, I would like to as the flooding issues, we're not unaware of the problems. And trust me, every, just about every new development that comes up in front of us, that's a big issue for us. Um, we're aware of what happens downstream. Um, you know, we, I think just about every commercial development we, we've reviewed in the past, at least in the, since I've been on the, on the commission, <coughs> We're always worried about parking and an abundance of parking because of the too much concrete, too much asphalt, too much runoff. So it's something we always we're always looking at. Our hands are tied a little bit in that you know if if a, if a project meets the the conditions of the zoning ordinance, then we we can't we aren't, by by right we can't deny it. But we do consider those things, and if we think it's wrong, we'll say so. Um, but we also rely quite heavily on our staff who, to, to date, they have not led us astray. But we understand your concerns, and I think, I think that's, 
It's one thing we do have to be Mr. more cognizant of, and Mr. McCausland pointed out, is we become more, you know, traffic is an issue, uh, water runoff is an issue, but it, I can assure you it's something that we take into account when we, when we review these things. It may not always seem like it, but I can tell you it's considered. May I make a comment also, Madam Chair? Um, just want for process sake, um, you can always email um, the Planning Commission as well as the Township Board um, with your concerns. Um, Township Board meetings, we have a three minute limit. Planning Commission, um, usually about the same for public comment, but you are welcome to come when um, the project comes up to either the Planning Commission or the Township Board to make public comment. Um, but it's always helpful to send emails in advance so um, either commissioners or trustees um, know the issues that you are concerned about. We do have a three minute limit, but we have a representative for a group may speak for five minutes. So that's why we let that gentleman go for a longer, uh, speak for a longer time. How about a homeowners association? What do they get? They're a representative for a group. So that would be, be five minutes. More than three, more than five? No. A group, what would a group consist of? I have no idea. But thank you. Well, I just, I was kind of shocked tonight because, you know, we looked at that first plan and I'm glad we tabled it. And Mr. Watkins, I, I got I to hand it to you, man. You're really looking at this stuff and you understand it. And there's so many problems with that site that we don't know. You don't know. I know because I've been there for 40 years. But there's just so many problems. We didn't talk about traffic. That's a 50 mile an hour road. 50 mile an hour road. Infrastructure, stormwater. We're never gonna get there going like this because these are just piecemeals. In particular, that piece of property, just to give, just give you one little oversight, that's the, that goes underground into Westland, okay? What goes underground into Westland? The drainage there. Thank you. Excuse me. Okay. The drainage into that site is going to go underground into Westland. Do we have any calculations for that? Did we do any studies on that? Do we know anything? No, they're going to say go to Wayne County. They'll go to Wayne County. You know, there's just so many things on that site that are problematic that affect the whole township. That's where the problem starts, backs up throughout the whole township. I don't want to waste anybody else's time because you know what my answer is. Until this township invest in regional detention, sell some of that property, we're not in the real estate business, sell it, get regional detention, we'll be farther ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I've had many conversations with the Keith, engineering department. Sorry, could you please state your name and address um, for the record? Keith Weasty, 3952 Brookside in Grandview Estates. Thank you. Um, I've kind of been heading a little group of us. I've had many conversations with the engineering people, and they are fantastic. And Township engineering people are great. They've come out. They've seen everything. They know what's going on. The problem is, is it's the county. It's the county. That's our, that's the constant answer to every single thing is it's the county. 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 Somebody's got to put the, some pressure on this county to actually do something. One of the engineering guys sent an email to Wayne County to come uh, clean out the drains. We have still not had anybody come out since last week to clear any of the drains. Wayne County does nothing for Canton Township. Zero. I've emailed our district, um, district 10 supervisor. I've emailed, um, Mer what's her name, Marie, the um, head of the Canton Township. Every answer is Wayne County, Wayne County, Wayne County. But you guys get no respect from Wayne County because they don't do anything for us, my opinion. Can't disagree with you. Sure. 
we have two. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, my bed is calling my name. <laughs> my name is Joe Kabinsky. I live at 50384 Weston and uh, part of Grandview Estates. I'd like to make a couple of comments about the flooding that was previously mentioned. Uh, my background is I've designed flood control projects. I've also done hydrological analyses and so forth, and I'm retired. And I'm going to ask to speak to uh, Patrick. Yeah, and later on, and I'll leave him my business card just so he can get a hold of him if he wants. The flooding we I observed, I was here and it flooded in 21 and in 23. I'm new, <coughs> I'm new to Canton. I'm from Dearborn. And essentially, uh, the, the flooding I observed locally near me was water from other than the development I'm living in. It came down Bar Road like a river. It went to Gettys, and then it went like a river towards Denton. And essentially, uh, all I'm going to do now in, in, in addressing uh, the group I'm addressing is when you're considering future development, that you really look hard at where the water is going to go. We can get water out of Canton, but it's got to go somewhere. Right now, Fowler Creek doesn't pass enough water. It's going into the Rouge River, which last week, with no flood event, was one foot above flood stage. But where was the water from Fowler Creek going to go? Nowhere. Which means Gettys had the foot of water we had on Gettys Road, which was outside of our division, subdivision. But this is the problem in <coughs> and it's a very complex problem. Because even if we can get water out of Canton, we're going to flood someone downstream. So anyway, my bottom line is it's complex, costly to, to figure out, and is not something that's going to go away. And I can wholeheartedly appreciate the fact that, you know, the, the, the you know, your commission has to look at the current ordinances and approve things based on that. But once again, uh, sizing detention ponds, they're all too small in my opinion. And I got a good opinion. I mean, as far as I think it's worth something. But once again, opinions are, and I thank you for the time. And uh, if you have any questions of me, I'll be glad to answer them. Um, and once again, the, 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 the bottom line is the water's got to go somewhere. We can't get it out of Canton mm -hmm. right now. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Anyone else? I think there's only one gentleman here we haven't heard from. Could you please go to the, po the podium? Especially if you're going to say something nice. Yeah, yeah really. Loud. We want it recorded. <laughs> it's, it is being recorded. Don't worry. You'll be on TV. <laughs> well, then I better watch what I say, huh? Yeah. Uh, I would like to thank you could, for could you give your, us your knowledge, name and address, your please, dedication. Sir. sir, could you just give us your name and address for the oh, record? My name is Jim Sawyer. I am Tom's younger brother. My parents did that to him. I Very live good. At, 50372 Weston. I was one of the people whose basement flooded first in 2021. And, or, yeah, 2021, and then again, 26 months later, another 500-year flood came by. And uh, I lost tens of thousands of dollars of mm. possession in my basement. First time I was lucky, Pulte still owned the house. We hadn't closed on it yet. So they had to replace the air conditioner, the water heater, the furnace, the sump pump, and the stairway in the basement because there was that much water. But I understand this is not your problem to solve, but it may be a problem that you can help move along. Um, and as I said, thank you for your dedication. Thank you for your perseverance in sitting here this long and looking at these faces. I know I grew a beard so I didn't have to look at mine when I shaved in the morning. So thank you again. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, very good. Motion to adjourn, Madam Chair. Close. Thank you. Absolutely. Close the All public right. hearing. We have a motion to adjourn. Adjourn.
And we have a support. Okay, we have a motion to adjourn by Commissioner Watkins, support by Commissioner Foster. All in favor say aye. Aye. See you next week or two weeks, three.